Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to a, a podcast, podcast will save, save this relationship. relationship. I'm Josh, he, him. I'm Sarah, she, her. And on today's podcast, we talked about Love is Blind. We did. For the whole show. No, nope, for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and then we talked about Barry. <laughs> for like 20 minutes. And then we talked about Starkit's Prophecy for about for like 20, 20 minutes. minutes. And then we did Red Stories for about 20 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. This is the 20 minute podcast. <laughs> 20, 20, 20. Uh, 20. But okay. uh, yeah, uh, as usual, just didn't hope you guys enjoy the show. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the Gosh Darn Bell. Raise five stars on Apple and Spotify. It is one in the afternoon, and I want to go eat, so I'm rushing through the intro. Yeah, let's go eat food. Yeah, but thank you all for watching, and enjoy the show. Bye. Bye. Early podcast. Early podcast. It's an early podcast. Yes. Do you think that'll mean that it'll be a much more laid back show or do you think it'll be just as chaotic as usual? Well, now I'm riled up. So. You're riled up. So, okay. All right. That's fair. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a nice, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to toe the line mm -hmm. of being relaxed and on the brink of self-destruction. I think that's the, yeah, I think so too. I think that's a good line to, <laughs> to, 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 to walk. I think part of it is I'm tired as fuck too. Yeah. Right. So I mean, to be I'm fair, we've more had angry. Six hours of sleep. Yeah. Mm, yeah. For like every day. Yeah. For the past, for the three past days. multiple so, days. So we've been house sitting. Yeah. We've, we've, been house sitting for the past few days watching over two of my, my old dogs dogs and uh fucking we decided to come back here because the the thought of me packing up all this equipment and bringing it over and doing it there is like insane yeah and even like i feel part of me is like plus we have a set you know we have a whole set yeah you know yeah fucking how are you doing sarah i'm doing good how are you doing i'm doing good it's record store day it is we got a Bluey record. We did. We got the Bluey dance mode record. And because four we other Bluey. fucking records. Yeah, four other bullshits <laughs> that I don't even fucking know. No, we got, what was it? The the Pixies. We got Pearl Jam. Sisters of Mercy EP. That was a 2023. Yeah. The Reptile House 2023 exclusive, which has the Dr. Avalanche drum machine on it. It was in the smoky black and black and gray. Yeah, I loved all the the records this year. Like they all had a nice yeah. color tone, except for Pearl Jam. Fuck Pearl Jam. <laughs> Pearl Jam was normal, but it was also had seventeen unreleased tracks. Like everything like, yeah. that you could get at record store day is going to be special. Yeah, and I, I will say I really like that this year. I don't know if it's like usually like this, but like mm -hmm. just like um live recordings. Yeah, usually and like stuff that hasn't been released yet. It's been it's fucking sweet. Also, like if you're a jazz fan, I think there was a lot of stuff for you. Yeah. There was a Chet Baker um, blues. There was Muddy Waters. Um, there was a um, another blues man that I don't know. A, a lot of various artists too. A lot of the soundtracks too. Yeah, and like because I know they had the Oceans Twelve soundtrack on yeah, vinyl. Yeah, that was for what? That was like, like 50, fifty something bucks, dollars. Yeah. It was a crazy town. Like, but yeah. you also got like three LPs with that. So, so like, yeah, it makes sense. Pretty good, fucking deal. Yeah, yeah. And I was going back and forth of like, I mean, it's fifty bucks. Yeah, but bluey. Also, I accidentally bought the next Jack White Vault package because I didn't close my subscription out, so I don't even know what that one's going to be, but it's going to come. Hell yeah, though, dude. Well, I will say, though, fucking, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they've announced it because it's the deadline. Yeah, so, like, fucking, I don't know. I will I say the, the Vault package with uh, Elephant, Elephant is was a, fucking awesome. All their White Stripes releases are usually pretty good. I will say that the Elephant 20-year um, release, which, can you believe that seven? I was thinking about this. Can you believe that Seven Nation Army is twenty years old now? I e easily. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. It hasn't aged. Like rem it's still I remember like the first good. time I heard Seven Nation Army, right after, like once it was on MTV. Oh yeah. Right after it came out, and like I can't believe that was fucking twenty years. Ago. Yeah, I remember like yeah pre twenty ten listening to it for the first time and watching it on YouTube. Yeah, the, with the big the, the triangles. Yeah. And fucking, yeah. So good. That was fucking amazing. Good week for records for us, I feel like. Yeah, we got yeah. a lot of good shit. So yeah, that's why we're up early. Because we had to we waited in line at eight in the morning. And it it took like no seconds. Like Twenty minutes. I tops. won like a sweepstakes, um, where I got like a like a early spot, basically. Yeah, and I think you got like the literally the first like time slot. No, no. Well, I guess yeah, one A, I guess for eight AM, yeah. yeah. And they were like, get there at seven thirty, I guess, because like there's gonna be a big line. Yeah, and yeah. there there was like a moderate line. Yeah, usually like I've it's been record store day, and I've passed by that place, and like every time record store day comes up, I always fucking forget. Yeah, because <sighs> right after Easter, I'm thinking Easter's over. 
there are no holidays until like Halloween, pretty much. Pretty yeah, honestly. Or I it's guess all the regular like Father's Day, Mother's Day, Labor July Day, 4th, July Fourth, July Fourth, stupid things that I don't really celebrate. And um, so I don't really celebrate shit until like Halloween. Yeah. So I just like turn off my brain, and then Record Store Day comes up, and it's in late April, and I always forget. Yeah. Um, and it's people used to camp out like a fuck ton. Yeah, yeah, I will say this year there wasn't a lot of camping out from what I could tell. Well, because they did, they did the, the slot uh, thing. Yeah. yeah. So that was like everyone was supposed to have a slot. Yeah. It's just the sweepstakes was you get like literally the first early one, so access. You're in out, yeah. And you get to enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. yeah that'll be, that's <laughs> yeah. nice. So yeah, I don't know. It was really nice. We just, we walked in. They literally called your name like two minutes after as, we got as in. As soon as we walked in, they gave us all the shit that we. All five of it. And then they yeah. gave out a bunch of freebies. I got new jump rope. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause I bought this shirt, which goes to charity, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think five five they did a food dollars drive too. Yeah, which yeah. We, well, to take we part got in, there but... too early for the food drive. I think. Oh, really? Shit. There was like a coffee thing, but the only other things that were open were like the charities that showed up. Yeah, which was yeah. I don't know. It was, it was fucking a lot of fun though. Like, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy we got all we did. Fucking yeah. yeah. So that's why we're up early and we might be a bit tired than normal. So just so you guys know. Yeah. Uh, but we got some. We got a good show on the docket. We, we got do. Love Is Blind. Is is it? That's the, it's such a fucking, like, good joke. I, I can't stress, like... Is it blind? Is it blind? Probably Have no we, one's talking about this anymore because we, we didn't talk about it when it was talk, happening. Yeah. Be, and also, we didn't record, we recorded before the live reunion special, and I'm gonna be real with you, like, I don't, I didn't give a shit about the live reunion too much. I mean, I, it was interesting to watch. I think some, it hasn't been as good as the later, latter ones. Well, they haven't done a reunion since they only really do reunions for like messy messes. Yeah, that come up. I think Vanessa Lachey needs to. Well, that's violent. I think I don't want to say violence against another woman. I don't want to do that. But Vanessa I Lachey, think Inves, Van, Vanessa the ball. needs to stop doing this. I think, or stop doing drugs or alcohol before going on it. Yeah, because like there was I don't a... think she was high. I'm just like she was just really aggressive and I don't really understand why and I've never seen her be that aggressive before. Yeah, even before with like even messier seasons. She's just been like, so what about this? And asked like kind of a triggering question and they respond. She goes, okay. And then she moves on, you know? Yeah, and I, th I wonder how much of that is because of the live format. Yeah, I think she was playing it up, but it also looked like Nick Lachey was like, what are you what doing? What are you fucking doing? Yeah. Like, I don't know, but it's possible that's just the regular, like, you know, like they plan for, like, um, Yoko Ono and John Lennon, I like Yoko Ono is just like, like that. Yeah. You know? And then people think that John is like a ball and chain to Yoko and really they were very in love. So. Yeah. No, yeah. It's you just, know, it's, it's the like, perception. I, I get it. I want to buy in a misogyny like that, but I'm just like, it just wasn't good hosting <laughs> yeah it wasn't yeah it and just like, wasn't very good hosting. i think you retweeted something about like how she was like really aggressive towards like the guys to specifically marshall yeah and marshall uh, like marshall, marshall got didn't do shit a really bad fucking deal out of the experiment yeah because, like jack and like also like really i really didn't like josh and jackie like Zooming in. Zooming in and like not giving Marshall a real chance to like defend himself. It was pretty fucked up. Like I think that's kind of like the craziest thing because that was like probably the worst like thing that happened during the season. Yeah like they basically accused Marshall of saying a slur and then Marshall's like I did not do that. And then Vanessa Lachey was like mm, okay sure. And it was like what? we don't know you guys filmed the entire thing. The entire thing yeah. And you don't have like that evidence you know what I mean? Yeah I, I don't what? How the fuck you? Oh, sorry, guys. We turned off the the cameras for twenty minutes. I'm supposed to fucking believe Jackie? Yeah, no. There's no reason to believe when she posted those uh, homophobic fucking tweets, dude. Yeah, those were pretty bad. And like the text messages or something. That yeah, came or, out. yeah, the sorry, yeah, not the tweets, the text messages. Yeah, her fucking friend. They, she was talking about how she thought that Marshall was gay. Yeah, and the argument was portrayed as being um. Uh, that she wanted him to throw her around the bedroom, basically be more aggressive. And he was like, well, I'm not that. I'm not going to do that because I don't like doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And then she said, 
like you're not a man or she implied like you're not a man if you can't do that and that's which is, like which is like not good communication yeah. at the very very uh, giving her the most, the most benefit of the doubt yeah, yeah because it's like if she says well that's a requirement to date me there you go you have a different situation right yeah but that's also yeah, yeah, she was that's to communicate like she was we're texting hitting bedrock her, here. Yeah, like she was texting her friends that she thinks that he's gay because he doesn't want to because he acts f- effeminate sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's that makes you gay. That makes you actually. And what it sounds like was she said to him that, "Hey, don't do that. You look like a girl." And then he said, "You look like a man." And then, <laughs> and then she extrapolated into that that he said like the T slur or something. Yeah, and like which maybe he did, and that sucks. Yeah. He shouldn't say that. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, he should be. If he said that, that fucking sucks. Yeah, and it sucks to I be called a T slur. Worst yeah. case scenario, everyone's shitty here. You know what I mean? Like yes. to put it in the in the Reddit terms that we've come to love. Like the the fucking, but also like I don't know. I feel like from the the just vibes, just, vi- just going, vibes going going off of vibes. I believe in Marshall. Man. I believe in Marshall like <laughs> way more. Yeah, just vibes. And also, like Marshall just seems like a nicer person like showing yeah. up for like um whose wedding fuck what's his what's his oh, name oh um it's i liked it yeah i really liked him a lot ah uh, fuck i love i want to i think i liked <sighs> brett. Pretty, was it brett yeah brett. okay Brett's yeah wedding, where Brett's, he he was fixing his pants which that was oh my okay oh fuck i forgot i wanted to talk about that fucking i hate editing yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god yeah. i hate you know, I think the problem with this season, and it's not a problem with well, okay, there's a problem with like three two other people that we haven't talked about yet. But I think the problem yeah. with this show is that they really they really stretched out all the dramatic and incidents. Especially between Brett and Tiffany, because they really didn't have any problems. They just communicated with each other. And that makes for boring television. But then, like, anytime Tiffany was, like, on screen crying, they would put, like, the like, the, like, yeah. the intense music, almost. Like, they're I'm, gonna like, break up because she's crying, and it's like, and that's not it's true. The, the royalty free, like, are they gonna stay break together up, You know? Yeah. And then it cuts to, like, because, like, they're the only ones that even <laughs> have, like, a remotely, like... <laughs> Yeah, and then what's a uh, uh, fucking Zach with like yeah. the only real thing they had was like the dad being kind of like, "Are you sure about this?" Yeah, and then they were like, "Well, the dad, oh, they God, <laughs> forever." The dad was he was pretty fucked up with what he said. Well, yeah, he not was, gonna lie, like he I, either he was playing it up or he's just like fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think like the dad at least like was still supportive at the end which was good yeah like however they edited him whatever he did i don't know it, he seemed very very fucked up at the dinner and then when she was at her wedding he was like listen you're gonna be okay no matter what which is very sweet that's sweet yeah and i think it's just like oh okay he's just a really protective dad yeah and that's fine whatever like, yeah. yeah i mean you shouldn't be rude yeah you shouldn't be it's like it's not like it's yeah, permissible sure. to be fucking rude <laughs> yeah we're like okay whatever yeah, you love each other. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. And like, like legit, your like eyes. saying like I don't believe it, but yeah, <laughs> it's like whoa, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy to say out loud. <laughs> You're such a dick. But you know, like I say, like we always say, like you know, am I the asshole? Yeah, you're you're not. You know, you're not an asshole forever. forever. Yeah. So I don't and, know. And I don't know. And like uh, I know with like Kwame and um, I can't remember her name. Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah, that was like there was a few moments where I was like, are they gonna make it? I, there were a lot of moments where I was like, "Are they gonna make?" I it? think that's why they got the a bigger focus than the other two. And there's also um, uh, what's it's Mika and who else? Micah and Micah uh, and Irina. Irina, no, the the uh, Micah's. Oh, partner. Micah and Paul. Paul, um, because they didn't get that much. I feel like they didn't get a lot of screen time, and that was like the more shocking. Like, yeah, they didn't make it to the altar, or they made it to the altar, but then. He said no. Yeah. Um. I I really um. Uh. What was my main point about editing? Okay. So throughout the entire show, like editing after, is annoying on the show. This was yeah, and I think this was more annoying than previous seasons. And I want to bring it up specifically for Brett mm-hmm. because they really tried to make it seem like Brett was or like 
Bro Tiffany. was gonna leave or something. Or like, yeah, like. Oh yes, yeah, when he was like, "This should not happen." On yeah, my wedding and they day. played that clip like so no many joke, times. like double digits at least. And I swear to God, I was like, "This is gonna be about his pants," or like something yeah, like. Yeah, it was about like, his pants. And yeah. it was a fucking about his pants, and it was like, "Well, I don't care," and he had to go get his pants rehemmed, and I just thought that was really cute. I think it's cute as shit when a groom is very interested in his wedding and wants to yeah, be. Yeah, and like you know, in his, I think that's fucking amazing. But I really do feel, I feel that like ickiness from Netflix of like they really, they just, you, they yeah. want you to like fucking like they want the drama, they want the fucking, you know, like the clicks. I just buy into that with reality TV now. It's like yeah. marketing, you know, where you just see like five million billboards on your way out of the state, and it's like. You just accept it. With reality TV, it's like every two seconds there's a fucking commercial. It's like, what's going to happen next? Khloe Kardashian's taking a big poopy on Scott's chest. It's the fucking, <laughs> um, it's the fucking, uh, it's the, uh, the house sketches by Kyle Mooney and yeah. Brett from SNL. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those were like fucking, uh, it's exactly that. And it's like, yeah. Not Brett. I don't even think of his name right now. Fuck. Oh, God. Beck. Yeah. Beck. 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 A lot of B names. But yeah, like, I don't know, like, fucking, um, God, I really, I'm happy that the season, like, actually ended up with some couples that lasted to the reunion, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I oh my God. Okay. I, I'm all over the place because there's just so much I'm trying to remember. Uh, I, I, I like, I, I, I want to talk about Zach and, uh, I guess, Bliss yeah. Bliss and Irina? And Irina and me, Micah, whatever her name is. Who do you pronounced. want to start with? Do you want to talk about Irina and Micah? Because, like... Yeah, they were bitches. Yeah, were that's bitches. that's kind of the long and short of that's, it. Yeah. And it's really... And it's I'll, shocking to see because it's like, you know, if you're not around people like that, you often. can't... You're, you're like, what the fuck? Why would anyone be like that? And I think a lot of times when people are like, yeah, I had an ex-girlfriend or I had a friend who did this shit to me, people are like, that's not true. That would never happen. And then you watch it happen on this fucking. I will, I really will say like I. It's like some some women are bitches. I'm sorry. Some women, yeah. I'm sorry. They are sometimes. And of course, like the asshole thing, they're not bitches forever. Yeah, and I will say I think they're just kind of sometimes they be a bitch. Yeah, and I, by that I mean like they lack complete empathy for other human beings. And I, I will say I think. Uh, Micah probably had more redemption. Yeah, I think she really is like you know, kind of remorseful a little bit about like what happened. Because like, I mean, bitchiness as a concept is like, and this is also partly why I think it shouldn't be seen as a gendered slur, is because bitchiness as a concept is like a, it's almost like a culture to me. You know, it's like a defense mechanism. Like as a girl, you go and you meet other girls and you all hang out and you just kind of gravitate towards each other and the girl group forms and then you know you pick out who you like and you don't like and then you start your your big group chat and then you got your small group chat yeah where and you, start you got people the off. one-on-ones yeah. and you got the group chat with everybody but this person all the politics of you know the yeah yeah and it's just i don't know what makes it happen yeah and i mean i don't know that happens definitely with like with guys too because i remember that from oh, like yeah. like film you know that's what i mean funny, yeah. yeah so like it's all it's all bullshit i don't know i feel yeah, like it's, it's all just, like it's like a it's like an attitude yeah guys can be a bitch too yeah. it's like yeah it's like you're just kind of being shitty you're just kind of being shitty yeah and i don't know what it is i think it's a defense mechanism from like feeling insecure you yeah know? and that's fine well you know yeah it's okay to be insecure just yeah. like it's, it sucks when you're taking it out on other people. It sucks when you are like an adult and you're yeah. dealing with other adults that are have a higher level of maturity than you. And they assume other people are as mature as they are. And they go into things completely vulnerable. And then you talk shit about them and you hurt you hurt them. Yeah. By Which, acting immature because they assume that you're a good person and you're you're a shitty kid. Yeah, you know, you're acting in the way that you think is okay to act. It's just crazy that we caught two of them on television. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like the most like yeah. almost uncensored, uncut like yeah, save for like you know the 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 multi cam editing. But like I will say, yeah, right that one time with Irina, like just like laughing at um, I can't remember her name. 
Oh, Ashley? I think it was Ashley, yeah. Because Micah really wanted Paul, and Paul was going for Micah and Ashley, and he gave Ashley, like, a bunch of presents and shit, and then Micah was like, I fucking, you only are supposed to talk to me. Only talk to me. And then, yeah, kind of, like, like forced him. Off, like, yeah. Paul. And I don't, I... And, it, and then had Irina go and listen to Ashley crying. Yeah. To, like, make fun of her and figure out if Paul had broken up with her or not. Yeah. And that's, like... And it was really... That was bad. That was, like, crazy. the worst fucking thing I think I've seen on television in Be a long time. Because the show takes everything so seriously. Yeah. The contrast to women not really giving a fuck about the show and the game, you know? Yeah. It, it's and it's I think it's also specific to the show where it's like you gotta be here for the right reasons like they're trying to do a bachelorette thing and it's like well you're never really going to be that because you're fucking Netflix yeah you're goddamn Netflix I'm yeah. sorry it's just never gonna work that way yeah and I will say like uh, I don't know I feel bad for I feel bad for like I guess Zach or like yeah because like too. I don't know I feel like uh, that was kind of crazy I feel like Zach got attacked more originally are almost like it got kind of close to where like zach was getting attacked by everyone for, by everyone yeah still which is like dude he's just he's an autistic king like yeah he's just, just like, autistic man like almost for fucking sure like, him and bliss i mean i don't think i don't know if they're both autistic but they're both neurodivergent there, yeah wasn't there a thing where like the cartoon character like yeah so by the way like i i gotta say this i just gotta say this for me zach is like the hottest fucking guy he's so the show. fucking hot like, dude, I let's do not, not pretend understand. i'm let's like not, listen let's not sit here bro Yo, bro he had a <laughs> bro the sorry. beard the beard at the fucking when uh, he was in Mexico and he was just like chilling shirt off. I was like, that's a Greek god. That's a god. <laughs> <laughs> Michelangelo would made a fucking sculpture out of him. Oh my fucking like, yeah! Like people were treating him like he was ugly. And no, no, he like, wasn't. No, all these hot people look ugly. I only had a cow look. Yes. For like yeah, like very. I think about I have it every vivid day. Fucking imagery in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to cause like I don't know yeah. like fucking I don't like shit man I fucking love him so much God. I'm so he's so sweet yeah he's so kind and he's such a fucking baller that he he's the first guy in love is blind to be like this isn't working I want to break up like you know <laughs> what I mean every other dude and girl has been like I'm just gonna keep manipulating my partner and telling and get them to the altar and, and then get say to the no. altar and can then bring I'm gonna all my get friends a lot of followers here. on Instagram. Which I will say, like, fuck, um, uh, who was Mika's uh, guy again? Fuck, what's his name? There's Paul? Somebody, Paul, yeah. F kind of fuck Paul a little bit. Oh, Paul fucked I up. I don't know what happened in the back, in the back. Yeah, because, yeah, like, I don't know, like, fucking. He just seems like a, fl like, what from. Wishy-washy. Yeah, because, like, the fact that he was, like, he was asking everyone, should I do it? And everyone was like, yeah. And then he went up and was like, no. <laughs> yeah, and like, I don't know, like... <laughs> and, and, you know, then Micah was upset, and then he followed Micah. That was crazy. That was fucking weird. And then he says, like... And he says it like this. I'm gonna do it, an impression. Yeah. He says it like, did I make the wrong choice? He says it like a baby! <laughs> did I make the wrong choice? <laughs> fucking, yeah. Which, if I was crying because you said you didn't want to marry me in front of all my friends and family and all of America... Yeah. And you came up to me and said, ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh my bad. Did I make the wrong choice? Ooh, ooh, ooh I'm so sorry. You're crying. Punch to the face, I think. I would, I don't even know what I would do. I'd probably just, <laughs> that's legitimately, I would curl up and cry. I think. Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking bullying is what it should yeah. be. Jesus. And I know he probably didn't mean it to be, but like, it's the worst it thing came you off. can yeah, do. For fucking sure. It's like a kid on the playground that's like, fuck you i hate you and then you're like well fuck you and then he comes over and punches you and you're on the ground crying and he goes oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. oh, i'm sorry are you crying on the ground and then the teacher comes over and goes what the fuck is yeah, happening yeah. and then it's like why would you do that and he goes oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to <laughs> And you know he's making fun of you, but the teacher's like, oh, okay, it was an accident. Yeah, it was an accident, yeah. And somehow you have, like, a civil rights suit on your case now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've just been forcefully bullied. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old Dan Harmon thing, but it's like, I was never upset about the kid that pushed me down. I was more upset at the kids that tried to pity me by pulling me up, you know? 
Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I get that visceral feeling too. Where yeah. it's like, fuck it, whatever, I fell down on my own merits. Yeah, don't I get that. Hit it, don't treat me like I'm like a like lesser than because I fell down. It's more insulting. I'm laying here like a dog. <laughs> yeah, it's like what <laughs> fuck it's fucked up. God, fucking I don't know, yeah. Uh, what the fuck else happened? I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, I'm gonna be real with you guys. Like, I wasn't like that big on this season. No, like, I mean, I, but, but that's kind of like a good thing because like the couples that did make it through are like normal, healthy couples for the most part. Like, I really like Chelsea. Chelsea was cool. I really like Bliss. I Bliss, think Bliss, like, I thought Bliss was a baller from the beginning. Yeah, like, I for really sure. Went up to bother her by making cupcakes, and then Bliss went in, and told Zach straight up, "Yo, I ran fucking sucks balls." That takes balls to do. Yeah. And then the only thing I didn't like about Zach was that he was like, that's pretty toxic to say that the other person that you're dating sucks. And I was like, no, no, that's a, that's fair. That's something you should take Can into see, account. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There She's is, the there one is, living with her. So yeah, literally. Mm, yeah. And I think, but I also understand why Zach went with Irina because it seemed like she was more broken and more like attuned to him and yeah. he didn't think bliss's family put together family would accept him and that's fine like i get it but like i absolutely I, get it yeah, yeah but like damn you know you just that's what causes you to pick the keep picking the wrong people you know yeah and i don't know i feel like yeah it really like when it came to irene it feels very like <sighs> i i yeah i i can't even like put to words like i can't the, believe the... she fucking tried to go up on there and say that everything that she had was a panic attack which I'm that's like, that's cr- like I maybe it was right, but you, you're be. also texting Bliss. You dodged a bullet. I think yeah. I think the panic kind of went down a little bit, and you're yeah. just on the attack <laughs> at that fucking point. Like I don't know. Maybe it's like she thought she had a panic attack because Zach is like, "What are what are we? What is going on?" And then, <laughs> <They're just> like, <sighs> yeah, and this guy is needy. <laughs> he wants to kiss and hug. God, but yeah. No- <laughs> So you dodged a bullet, You sis. dodged a bullet, yeah. Stupid. You know. Do- you dodged a bullet. Most gorgeous man with beard come out. <laughs> the most attractive man in the world. <laughs> Not true. D- d- you're the most attractive Oh, girl. thank you. Yeah, you're the most attractive girl in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Um, uh, but no, fucking, uh, yeah. No, he's really hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. You get a, you get a pass. Don't worry. You get the Zach pass. <laughs> Why did everyone treat him like? It? Okay, I do want to talk about the cartoon character thing for a second. Yeah, because that, that was just fucking crazy. That was fucking ridiculous. And somebody said it's like uh, when an autistic person meets someone for the first time, it's just people that are neurotypical. You know, see them and they go, well, "That person's not neurotypical." I feel because of my internalized ableism, I feel put off by that Mm. and i think she was trying to describe that they took irena saying he looks like a cartoon character as like a cgi person yeah and like and so she was trying to describe like a the uncanny valley effect of meeting someone with autism and feeling like something's off here you're not a real human being (laughs) um (laughs) and um i mean I understand that perspective because, like, that is literally what she said. You're a cartoon character, not a human being. And uh, I thought it was like you're so hot that you're like a cartoon, like a like a comic book, like you're like Superman or yeah. like you're like you know the woman version that would be like when Jessica I, Rabbit. No, or yeah, something. when I heard cartoon character, I was immediately like like a goofy like SpongeBob, <laughs> like, fucking, <laughs> like a fucking. <laughs> different interpretations really funny <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about he does not look like a cartoon he's he like literally he's literally like laying down like fucking with the his half huge shirt dick out. Yeah. his, fucking, you his know, muscles his big muscles talking about being a criminal attorney like yeah. <laughs> i protect the innocent dude oh my god dude and you're just oh, like you look like god. goofy from the goofy from movie the goofy, from, from goof the, a very goofy movie yeah <laughs> Price. I don't know. I really don't have a lot to say the more I think about it other than Zach hot. Zach is hot. Yeah. I like that he got back together with Bliss. I thought it was very quick. 
the the wedding, but I'm glad that they're they seem that's very also happy. Like, yeah, the point of the show too, so I get it. Like, yeah. yeah, it's not like too weird. I, I'm In kinda, the like, context of the show, it's not too weird. I'm glad that they made an exception for them to come back and do the thing. Yeah, and they didn't just fail out. You know, I I agree that that was awesome. Yeah, that's nice. I can't believe Jackie kept the ring. That fuck Jackie. I feel like it's common fucking sense that if your marriage fails, you give the ring back. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't get the excuse of like. Also, the lying, uh, like, like for sure of like, it feels like lying of like the oh he was gonna use it on another cast member. Who? Yeah, who? Who? Say names. What? And I guess they did. It was like some other lady that was there. I never and fucking, fucking saw. And fucking and fucking autistic Zach coming in just saying like yo I that's bullshit. That's yeah, fucking. it's so cool that he said that. <laughs> He's a tr- it's not even autism. That's a, that's attorney brain. Like fucking no, your literally. honor. <laughs> and, and like as soon as um <laughs> Vanessa Lachey started grilling Paul. Oh yeah. He like immediately was like Whisper. I'm gonna get you out of this. I'm gonna get you out of this. Don't <laughs> worry. Like, like, Don't say anything. Yeah. I got this. And then Vanessa's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, Your Honor, I was conf- conversing there was some- with my client. <laughs> if you see exhibit C <laughs> You'd see that Paul is a good guy. Yeah. Save for saying some weird shit, but that whatever. But yeah, fucking, he did say some weird. He said some fucking crazy shit about Micah. I'm sorry, I don't yeah. like Micah. Obviously, but I think yeah, there's still a limit to like you know like there's reasonable critique, and then there's like you're just lying to not marry Mike. Any man that says like I don't see her as a nurturing mother can keep that fucking shit to themselves. Yeah, don't yeah about any woman. I don't give a shit. I don't care if she's like woman Hitler. I don't <laughs> even fucking care. I don't I don't care if it's fucking Margaret Thatcher, you know what I mean? You don't say that shit. You don't talk you don't call into question the nurturability of a woman. Yeah, that is kind of a yeah. Like you know what it sounds is like, oh yeah, she seems like she's barren. So I don't want to have sex because I can't uh, uh, sew children together. <laughs> like, fuck you. Go back to fucking Pilgrim Town. Yeah. You know? The only there was a way to fucking burn her and then, uh, then put her on trial for being a witch. Go all the way back to fucking Hammurabi and buy women with goats, you know? Yeah. Fuck off. Even if she's kind of a bitch sometimes. Yeah. You know, just like get to <laughs> say, excuse me, I, <laughs> I don't just... think she's a good mother. I don't think she would ever be a good mother. Oh my yeah, god! You might be surprised that the woman has thoughts and, and feelings, and you know can have. <laughs> Sometimes you want to treat the lady like a human. <laughs> That's some real <laughs> fucked up shit. Yeah, that was some real fucked up shit. Honestly, oh my god, forgot about all that. I'm trying to think of anything else. It's a show. Kwame I mean, and the Micah <laughs> thing was stupid. I don't know. Yeah, that was what. Yeah, I don't know. She God. was crazy for saying that shit to him too. But I mean, you know, I think that's everything. It's the show. It's the you know, I it's yeah, a lot of it you can just put on it being reality TV and just having a bunch of cameras. I thought it was so funny that um, Jackie went with Josh because Josh seems more gay than Marshall. J- Josh is a dangly little earring. I, ki- I kind of, I get what you mean. Yeah, he's so gay. I'm just like, I don't know, and I mean, like, actually, like a homosexual. Like, I think, like, yeah, like, yeah, he's probably like bi or something. I will say, yeah, and I, that's another like kind of weird parallel because I remember like, like maybe two mm-hmm. or three seasons earlier, mm-hmm. there was that woman that uh, the, the woman that they that Netflix has since brought back. Yeah, for Perfect Match, and not the guy. Yeah, because and I'm now thinking uh, Netflix has a biphobia problem. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Because yeah. yeah, why do you keep bringing biphobic people on here and not vetting them against that and not thinking that like why you know, are you like, continuously yeah. making a space that's not safe for queer people yeah. and bringing queer people in like that is pretty fucked up. Yeah, and I will say yeah, I remember like being kind of I think I might have I don't know if I said it on the podcast and I hope I didn't. But, like, with Perfect Match, I was like, okay, it's kind of cool that they have, like, you know, pander bi yeah. people. But I remember, like, I I, have, I didn't read this article, but I know there's, I want to bet there's been some critiques about how it was, like, presented in the show. Like, how, like, queerness was represented. But was it, like, good representation, you know? Uh, you mean, like, specifically with uh, Francesca? Was Perfect Match? Uh, like... On Perfect Match? Like, I, Francesca and the other girl? Yeah, and there was, like... Was that the only... Was that it? Yeah, very much. Oh, and, well. um... So there's another Joey's person. girl. 
Oh yeah, true. I, I don't like think Joey's... there was a gay man on there. I I think it was mostly just women. Yeah. That was the only thing. And I was like, yeah, I mean, but those are also real arguments between like gay women is like, you know, one woman wants monogamy and the other one thinks it's okay to just like kiss her friends and That's true, yeah. You know, so. whether whatever opinion you have on it is like, I mean, it's a boundaries thing, right? Yeah, and I think that's like kind of <laughs> And yeah, it's fetishizing yeah. uh women loving women relationships. But that's yeah, that's yeah. what it's about. That's what performatively kissing your friends in front of a bunch of men wearing swimsuits is about. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, perfect match. Oh my god, I'm just remembering perfect match. I don't want to yeah. talk about perfect match. No, me neither. Yeah, no, yeah, it's just, yeah, okay. Uh but yeah, no, Netflix, uh stop making TV shows. Uh yeah. <laughs> please stop torturing me. Please stop it. Please stop. Or like get a gay person yeah. to come in and like actually make some changes, please. Love of God, all that's holy. You want to talk about a good show? Yeah. I would love to do that. That's actually, yeah. <laughs> God, uh, I, I, I love how I said, like, fucking, let's do four stories each just to save time, and I think we're going to spend double the time talking about fucking Barry. Barry is insane. Um, I don't, I think Barry's going to be our new Last of Us for a little bit, yeah. because, um, I forgot, I, I didn't forget, but I'm just remembering how much I love this show. It's so fucking unhinged now. I, uh, you know, I, I want to give credit to the idea of just slamming your foot on the gas pedal because they're really like, oh my god, Bill fucking hater needs to needs to like pull back a little bit. He's got to for the rest of us. <laughs> it, just for the um, rest of us. I, I'm happy he's putting he's putting all the pressure. <laughs> I'm happy he's doing it, but holy fuck, man! I don't. I'm never gonna make TV shows, dude. I've every episode of Barry so far, I've been like, "This is oh, happening. No. This is happening." I've, you know, it's one of those things where you don't know where it's going, and then you figure you put the pieces together, and you're like, "Oh, this! All oh, oh, these chess pieces are oops. are coming in, baby." Like this entire thing, like as an arc, because it's the last season, is now and spoiler alert. Is like to cause Barry to go like off the fucking deep oh, end. Oh yeah, again. I'm like, is this gonna end like fucking Stephen King's apt pupil, where he's like on the fucking <laughs> side of the road with a gun, just shooting civilians? Yeah. You know, like, is that what's going to happen? Oh yeah, and like, I really, I think so. I think he's gonna kill all of the people that we've like. It's going to end with him killing everyone. I think. <laughs> oh, I feel like yeah, I that's kind like of it. like where it's going. Because like, what's the redemption know arc? That. What's there's the, none, there right? There can't be, right? Like, and, and we've known that since the beginning, too, because he's murdered so many people already. Yeah. And we've seen it kind of come back. It's all, the last season was all about consequences. Yeah, and it was all about, like, almost like regret, almost. Like, all the, I really like that last season they experimented with, like, the beach scenes. Yes. Where it was, like, all his victims and, like, all the people yeah. he's killed on the beach just and, like staring mm, out now they're doing that more you know but not even like focusing on the victims now just focusing on him on barry yeah which is like the I'm, most disturbing thing because we don't know really anything about him and they kind of played with that a little bit last time where there was someone was like you know a what's her face broke up with him um what was her name um fuck uh shit god she's so good Sally Sally yeah yeah Sally broke up with him and uh he was upset and he was gonna try and win her back and uh he just flat out said like no he made that collage and I think about it all the time oh where somebody yeah. was like oh you know you gotta show her who you really are you know you gotta show her who you are on the inside and he didn't know who he was because he's only been a ruthless killer his whole life yeah and he made a collage of like beer and monster trucks <laughs> <laughs> it's like Oh, he's like just a fuck. Like, yeah, he's just yeah. He's just, just an idiot fuck who knows how to fight. Yeah, who's really good at this one thing that like no one would be happy to know that he. Yeah, and like yeah. I, I really um, I really like that. Like they've always they've been like teasing like you know like they've been like slowly disseminating like the information of like mm -hmm. at war he got dishonorably or discharged you know for killing a civilian yeah yeah and like just like going completely crazy and then they even brought back like one of his war buddies for like yeah. the one episode and finally he's getting like come up and for killing uh moss in the first season janice moss yeah yeah like 
it's kind of I'm kind of like I'm really shocked at how well yeah they've played with all these ideas and there was a little bit of worry for me too and I I don't know why no, like I get juggling it, the four or five new storylines and places well from the beginning it was like you're digging a hole right yeah and it's like how far can you go and yeah. I'm glad they're kind of ending it this season because it's like it's there's At not point, much yeah. more you can do before Barry becomes God you know <laughs> <laughs> and then there's aliens <laughs> I'm yeah. Bill Hader, you know, like it, it was like you know Barry has to become ruler of the universe to get out of this, <laughs> and it's it's just like not going to work out. Yeah, you know, this isn't fucking Evil Dead. You know, no. you can't just have Bruce Campbell come in. And yeah, keep doing this like you know groovy baby. You know, that's not what this is. Exactly. Like, and I don't know, like the the worry of like I guess like juggling these four because like now we're like Barry stuck in prison mm -hmm. and he's having these visions about. Just like his life. His entire life. And it's more focusing on him. We have Fuchs like still trying to fuck over Barry. Well, like I think And then manipulating Barry. Because the entire last season all Fuchs wanted was an I'm sorry for going with Henry Winkler. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like thinking of him as his new father, because Fuchs has like a weird fatherly obsession with Barry where he feels like he has to protect him. Yeah. Um, but also Fuse is going to protect himself first at any point. Yeah. Yes. And so they're kind of tied together in that where Fuse knows all of the murders that Barry did and Barry knows all of the murders that Fuse told him to do. So yeah. legally it's like Barry could take down all of these things and get himself, you know, we're in a gang situation basically. Yeah. Where one person can take down the entire gang but they're not going to do it because everyone would know and kill them and yeah. all their family. And this is the, I guess this is the, the, the season where it's really like, we're going to take down the, just yeah. protect myself finally. Yeah. And like, that was like a fucking, um, cause like the, the, what is it? Um, uh, no ho, uh, what's his fucking no name? Hank. Hank and, um, fuck, what's his name? Um, Cristobal. Cristobal, yeah. Yeah. Like, both of them trying to, like, go legitimate yeah. with sand. And well, the, not really legit. They're still breaking the law of, like, trafficking. Yeah, true. They're trafficking. <laughs> they're just not trafficking drugs, yeah. And it's interesting seeing their relationship just keep, like, developing and, like, trying to, like, yeah. convince other people to just do this, like, the, the merging and bonding of, like, rivals together. Yeah. But then the first hint they get at Barry, like, talking to the FBI, they're immediately, like... Oh, we, no, ho Hank is, yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's like we gotta kill Barry. Even mm -hmm. when, like, he was like, bro, Barry's in prison, we gotta break him out. And Chris Ball's like, no, why would you do that? Well, I think it's because no, ho Hank, um, knows that Barry knows all the shit that he did for no, ho Hank. Yeah. I think that that's, and it's not really developed yet. I think they're probably gonna develop it soon. But, like, specifically, I think it's about how much he cares for Barry, but also. Because it's like a personal liability, kind of. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a mix of both. It's like a fear, you know? Like, I think, um, that I think they kind of implied that with Noah Hank dreaming that he was in prison looking at Barry, also in prison. Yeah. You know? And it's sort of a metaphorical, like, symbolism thing right now. It's not really like a concrete thing. Yeah. We're both kind of like trapped. And I think that's another, like, thing I think they're setting up now is mm -hmm. they're all trapped in LA even when they try to leave. Yeah. They're all being, like, sucked back like, in. Like, Sally went back home to and her, like, her abusive. shitty mom. Yeah. Oh, just being an absolute, like, the worst Dick. mother you could have. Yeah. Like, yeah. fucking, like, being shitty. And then the dad that just doesn't understand what's going on, but is trying to, like, kind of being supportive, but in a time toxic way of like not understanding yeah it's like the classic like um abusive parent and enabler parent you yeah know? where the enabler is like it's okay it's okay it's okay i'm gonna you know figure out all of your emotions so you never have to figure out your own emotions and i'm never going to stop the abuse yeah so you're going to also have to deal with the abuse but you know at least i'll be here to soothe you and this is our own sort of shitty power dynamic where you have to come to me yeah. And if I'm gone, then your whole world is gone. You know what I mean? Exactly. And um, that's a really classic scenario. And it was very real watching it. Yeah. It was and, very real about Sally. And there was like a really like sad like fuck. She's and like seeing her go back to LA to Barry. Yeah. And, and that Barry ruined her career. Yeah. By just her being involved. And is associated insane. with him. Yeah. Christ. 
And then, yeah, and then even with, like, uh, Hank and uh, Cristobal, like, they were in Santa Fe. Yeah. It's, I think it's really funny that they set up at the last season, like, all of them going away to L.A. And, and within just two episodes, they're back. just fucking, all right, we're back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> There's something drawing. I think that's a statement on L.A.'s fucking, like, the black hole of L.A. <laughs> Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. No, legitimately. Yeah. Fucking I, I really like I don't know, I thought that was like really fucking interesting seeing mm. that happen. There's an, there's another plot mm. line. Is it right? There's um Fuse, mm, Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler's, yeah. And which testifying thing, against Barry and um this whole He's the, kind of the comic relief right now. Which honestly, and I think they all have like their own little comic relief moments. Yeah. There was the cops in the first episode that were like starstruck with Barry. <laughs> They're like, you were on TV, and now you're in my cell. That's wild. Well, that's wild. And then, like, him being like, well, you were on TV. That's crazy. And then Barry... Barry like, punching the wall and, like, hitting himself and shit. Like, to the point of his hands bleeding. And then, like, yeah, the and cop trying like, to talk no, him down. it's okay. And then Barry... <laughs> yo, like, I really can't stress fucking Bill Hader acting. He's the most... It's the most... Just the this most, one... This, I don't... It's, <sighs> I don't it's crazy. Yeah, I, I had that scene spoiled for me from a TikTok where it was oh, really? like 2019 me and it's like Bill Hader on Sesame Street and it's, it's 2023 me and then it's Barry going, I'm gonna kill your fucking kids, fucking wife, <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I'm gonna fucking kill your mom. A cop killer. Like, I'm a cop killer. Yeah. And there's and you know, I really love the dark comedy of it because the next, the, 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 the smash cut shot of the cop just like <laughs> Yeah. And then Barry just like waiting, just like yeah. closed eye, like fucking like master class almost. I don't, I don't know if that was f funny to me. <laughs> like <laughs> that was just really fucking like oh yeah. shit. No, I think it was yeah. It was uh, I wouldn't say funny yeah, but yeah. like God. it was like it was Shocking. funny before when he was like it's okay, it's okay, don't worry, it'll be fine. It doesn't mean you're a bad guy. And I think you know because Barry was traumatized by that because because of Henry Winkler kind of turning on him. Where, you know, yeah. he's trying, he's like a, it's weird because, you know, Barry is a bad guy because of the actions that he's done, right? Yeah. But, um, he's been manipulated his entire life into doing that. Yeah. So it's difficult to, you know, and that's the large question, the meaning of the work of Barry, which is, you know, is this guy redeemable? Yeah. And I think it could really talk about the prison system too. Yeah. And I will you know? say it was very much like. It's really weird because, like, the past two seasons really was trying to make it, like, very irredeemable. As much irredeemable as, I guess, they, they could. Yeah, so they're, like, teeing it up to bring Are it Are they going to try and make him redeemable? Or is he just so self-destructive and, like... I think it's going to end on a question mark, honestly. I really? think it's going to be, like, what do you think? You know, because, like, it's... It's Soprano-style mid-sentence. Yeah, it's trying to ask <laughs> that question of, like... You know, do you think every person is redeemable? Because we've been t telling that to Barry so far, and he's been, you know, moments where he's like, "Yeah, I'm redeemable." Blah blah blah. I'm yeah. gonna stop, you know, doing that, and then he goes right back to it because that's just something that he's always known. Yeah. And there's he's not he's been robbed of the ability to create an identity. Hmm. Maybe he has sociopathy, something something wrong with him. Yeah. Um, and he's never been given that. Like, you know, he's never gone to therapy for it. He's never done any of that because no one told him that was like a thing that he could do and yeah no Ted Lasso one... didn't exist before <laughs> well it's like it doesn't matter you know it's yeah. he's all he was already caught up in like felony murders death sentences before the show started yeah literally yeah so like we're in too deep now it's like he's a lost cause but is he redeemable yeah I don't know yeah I really have no fucking, fucking clue it's amazing and also like like fucking Sally coming up and and being like, I'm here. And he's like, why are you here? Why aren't you leaving? Why aren't you leaving? Why aren't you leaving? And she's like, as I feel safe with you. And then him and like then him being like, wait, what did you say? What did you say? You feel safe? Did you say you feel safe yeah, with me? Yeah. And it's like, it's a, it's weird because it's Bill Hader. If he just said that in like a <laughs> SNL way, we'd all be laughing. No, no, no. that <laughs> no. was like the like scary. That like, was terrifying. Yeah, oh, God, I can't wait for the next episode. I man. really can't. Yeah, I don't even know what days they come out. Like I straight up, like I we've been waiting. Like I think it happened. 
Uh, let, let me look when Barry comes out, because like I'm like I I, I uh, there's times where I'm like I'm happy that we don't do binge watching that much anymore that we've gone yeah. back to an hour. Like I think it really does help out, but like fuck, man. I know. Sometimes the show is so good that like I just want all of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Barry, uh, season four, episode three. Tomorrow, yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Fuck yes, dude. Sunday night, baby. Just like The Last of Us. Yeah, Sunday. That nice, Sweet. dude. So yeah, we'll be an episode behind like we were last time. Woo! Fucking awesome. So good. Awesome show. Just go watch it. Go watch Barry. Just go watch, watch all Barry. of Barry. Just Fucking watch, Christ, please. I want beginning. more shows like Barry. Is it bad that I was thinking about Mr. Robot? <laughs> Why? All the shots were good. Writing wise, I guess I like the right. I think the writing. Oh, well, I wouldn't comparable. know about that because I don't watch it. Because <laughs> the so, shots are bad. Yeah, yes. yeah. It visually, it's a. It I'm gonna make. Me. I'm gonna make a poll on YouTube <laughs> this week <laughs> and on Twitter and be like, "Are the shots in Mr. Robot good?" And it'll just be yes or Josh did not allow the no. <laughs> and I'm gonna make 50 Twitter accounts. <laughs> Just to vote no. You know, I'm just gonna ask the question: Do you guys also like Mr. Robot as much as Josh does? And it's gonna be yes, and you can't. <laughs> you can't like it as much as I. I'll do. make 50 <laughs> Twitter accounts, and I'm going to comment: No, I do not. The shots are bad, <laughs> and different versions of that. Do you want to be petty? I'll be petty too, Josh. Do it. <laughs> I will do it. I did like um, Fugues, the idea of Fugues trying to get more people into his like hitman gang. Yeah, trying to like trying to like make his own gang, and then Barry being like, "I took an act like co acting coaching him." Yeah, and into like, like a sales position to like help him. I think that would be like as if this were strictly a comedy, and it wasn't about the the development of this terrible man. It you know, uh, I think. That could be a really funny concept for a comedy. Oh, just yeah. like two people trying to scam people in prison. Yeah. That's the spinoff. That's going to be the animated spinoff like they did with Better Call Saul. Yeah. <laughs> just like two idiots trying to scam a bunch of people in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Did you like the fake names I made up? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, I like the names. <laughs> And he's like, my name is Jeff. And he's like, no, your name is the dessert. Live Wire. Is live Wire. <laughs> there was another name, too. I know it was like, it reminded me of Lime Wire and like another, like, I don't think like pirating thing, but I can't like remember. It sounded similar. I just know he named the third guy Jeff. And he goes, but my name's not Jeff. And he goes, no, I'm Jeff. And he goes, no, you're Lime Wire. <laughs> you're Lime you're Wire. Jeff. <laughs> and I thought that was great. Yeah, that was really fucking good. Yeah. God. Barry's a good show. Yeah. I gotta go pee. Okay. I want to delay. Why is Barry comparable to Ted Lasso? I kind of feel like it is, you know? Like, it's on that caliber a little bit. I feel like, because, yeah, actually, like, yeah, I, I was joking a little bit earlier about, like, but but it's also is. about, like, it's kind of about mental health a little bit. Yeah. I oh, guess. yeah, for sure, yeah. It's just Ted Lasso is the fun your parents can watch it with you, <laughs> like. You know, well, it's, it's, and I wanted to say, like, at the end, Barry, like, it's not about nature versus nurture at all. It doesn't even ask yeah. that question, which is good because it's a stupid fucking question. You know, when you learn too much about serial killers and stuff like that, it's like, it. who cares? They yeah. killed a bunch of people. And it's the question of, should we look at their development or should we take it by their actions? Because that is the real question with serial killers that nature versus nurture. You can like dance around the real question with, you know, how do their parents it makes it about the parents and not about the individual you know what i mean yeah i feel that and it's like well yes we should look at our community and we should look at you know the different societal factors that create these people but we should also acknowledge that people who are born without the ability to have empathy exist and they do exist and they're still human beings and they deserve rights you know yeah you know <laughs> and also People are manipulated into committing crimes. Yeah, for sure. That's the other thing. So, yeah. And it's, you know, hmm. it's not a a black and white situation all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Interesting. Yeah. 
Comedians making dramas, man. <laughs> fucking so good. I can't wait for Severance to come oh, out. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, oh fucking. <laughs> it's just us orgasm. <laughs> oh, idea. TV. Oh, on TV. <laughs> I don't get my nuts from, uh, from sex anymore. I get it from white male oh. comedians making Directing really good TV shows. <laughs> Zoolander fucking making. Craig Mazin from the fucking hangover the, making fucking Lots of Us. We're also forgetting Adam Scott is a comedian. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's such a good actor in that thing. We forgot he was a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> I love quesadillas or whatever the fuck it is from Parks and Rec. I can't remember. Oh, uh, Calzones. Calzones, yeah. Calzones, the quesadillas of Italians. <laughs> or, he does the, would a depressed person make this? <laughs> And it's the <laughs> the little like the the miniature like yeah. uh, claymation. Yeah, <laughs> so good. It's really good. God. <sighs> All right, we gotta do fucking Sarkis prophecy. Let's go, babe. Two fucking chapters. Two chapels. Two. Yeah, that's how it would be spelled. Two chapels. Chapels. Chapel. Trap house. No. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Chapo Trap House? No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for laughing. Please okay. clap. Please clap. Please clap. Uh, okay. Where the fuck were we? Um, I don't remember. Okay. So there Do I have was to go back and watch the podcast? The Ten Commandments, and there was the turf. Yeah, there was turf, and then... Some other fucking bullshit. I don't know. What did I just say? That was the Ten Commandments was last time, right? No, we were past the Ten Commandments. Okay. They, he was, uh, Star Kit was going to bring it and then like he's going to become uh, Gleam Star, right? Right. Yeah. Some, I, I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, this fucking, this shit, I like nothing happens in it. I mean, stuff happens, but it's like. <laughs> More stuff happened than the wolf story. There's a wolf story, but I hate this one more somehow. Go on, freeze. Um, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck happened? There's like a they're do. Are they just about to start the ritual? Or because the, they got they got did they get attacked by Shadow Clan? Was that what it yes, was? Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah, and then I wow. Hack I, Frost. She was in love with Hack Frost. Yeah. What I just say about the gay. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Chapter 17, Return. Return, okay. Stargleam shook her head, uh, walking up from the den. Okay, wow. Only two letters in that word were correct. Didn't know. <laughs> in the den, Firestar was looking at her, and his green eyes were... Worried, I think? He was worried. Gleamstar, you were talking in your sleep. Are you okay? He asked. Jayfeather looked upset too. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Stargleam responded, getting up. I just had a bad dream, that's all. It's nothing. If you're sure, said Firestar, and they left the moon pool and headed back to the Thunderclan camp. Gleamstar, you're back! They said, happy, crowding all over her. Lake Pond Redpaw looked sad though, because Gleamstar has said they can't be in love. But Gleamstar ignored them, like you should. And she knew she had to do something more important. Okay. Lion Blaze, she said, looking for her deputy. I need you to track a patrol to the Shadow Clan Boulder. I need you to tell Blackstar I'm leader now, she said. And she turned and walked over to the leader's den, even though everyone was trying to ask her questions about the ceremony. Guys, let me go to bed, <laughs> she said, shooing <laughs> them away. So let me fucking sleep, guys. Let me have a night to myself. They all walked away, groaning. She never lets us have any fun, said Barry Noise. What? I don't know. That's not Kawhi at all. <laughs> <laughs> Gleamstar didn't care. She was waiting for Firestar. Then Fireheart came to her den. I'm leaving, he said, and he left. Stargleam followed him, yelling, What? Where are you going? Well, I can't be leader, so I'm just going to leave for a while. Maybe I'll be a rogue... Or maybe I'll join Sky Clan. Who knows? Then he left. Stargleam was sad because that was her mentor and one of the cats she loved leaving. But it was okay since Wait, that's what he wanted to do. The Sky Clan, the Heaven, right? Was that what that was? Sky Clan? No, that's Star Clan. Oh, Star Clan. Sky okay. Clan. No. 
don't know what strike line is. It's you, that'll be funny if it was just the implication of I was gonna go fucking kill myself. Nerds and gays, tell us what Sky Sky Clan is down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, well, I can't be leaders. I'm just gonna leave. All right, yeah, it's okay. Star Star said Hawk Frost, uh, apparating out of nowhere. I mean, I love you, so it's all good. I know. Said Starling purring. She wrapped her tail ro- around Hawk Frost's face. She didn't care that he was a rogue. She loved him. And now they could be together. No, that's cute. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Wrapped but, her tail around his face? That's kind of... I don't think you can do... I don't think cats can do that. Is that is the implication that the cat's just showing her ass? <laughs> I put my butthole in his mouth. And told him to sniff it. <laughs> Is that what, yeah, because like, what the I fuck else? Know. Like, yeah, you have to walk past, show off know. your ass. I don't think we have to worry about it too much. No, honestly. let's get into the nitty gritty <laughs> of Star Kid's fucking prophecy. Chapter 18, the death. The debt. One, 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 one. <laughs> None of those were exclamation points. Spoiler alert. Yeah. The death. I, I hope it's just, I hope it's Star Kid. Already un- unintelligible. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna read this the way it was written. Okay, yeah, the way the I'll author read the intended. The first two chapters, the way it was, the first two sentences, um, paragraphs. paragraphs. Okay, the way it was written. All right. So okay, I'm gonna read the chatter. I seen <laughs> the debt one 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 one. Star Kit wake up and she'd been asleep. There was a y'all from the cap capum. She run o tides her den. She. Junped of the high ridge. I got to kill you, ow, someone said. It wa dot s dot 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 Tiger Star. That was the first paragraph. So T T L U Don't know. T T L U. T T L U said Holly Leffa meanly from his eyes. Gleam Star Weld. Get out of the cramp, everyone. She called to hand her it herself. What the fuck is any of that supposed uh, to okay, mean? Okay, so Star Star woke up I, I'm to gonna, yelling. I'm gonna reread it. Okay, Gleam Star woke up. She'd been asleep. There was a yell from the camp. Someone was yelling from across the camp. She ran outside her den and jumped on top of the high ridge. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I gotta kill you. Someone said it was Tiger Star. Oh shit! TTLU. Don't know what that is. Talk to later, you. I don't know. <laughs> Talk to later, you. Yeah. Uh, said Holly Leaf meanly from his eyes. From his hide? No. Uh, what the fuck? Gleam Star yelled, "Get out of the camp, everyone!" She couldn't. She couldn't handle it herself. Handle yeah, it couldn't herself. handle it herself. There you go. I don't know. Still. Confusing action. Yeah, you know, not like, yeah, not, not, I'm not I don't understanding. really have a good image in my head. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me Starkid's prophecy, the, the author didn't put enough time and effort into the descriptive elements of the story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, said Barkfall. We love you so much, Starkling. We couldn't leave you. And the cats fought. Holly Leaf turned into a fox. Gleam Star was surprised. She jumped, but it was too late. The fox was an inch from her face when Lion Blaze appeared. She clawed him. There was blood. No! <laughs> said Gleamstar. She was grief. <laughs> <laughs> she was grief. Tears fall down her sparkling gray cheeks. Oh, okay. They shone like the sun on her sparkling cheeks. Her rainbow eyes were glowing. Like her sparkly cheeks. Okay. Her her rainbow eyes you were, got yeah. were glowing like the sky after rain. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to fuck with people by putting one like read kind it, of read it, Yeah, read okay. It. So um, the Foz, the Foz was an ink from her face. 
Her rainbow eyes were glowed like skies. Were glowing like skies after rain. It was beautifully faux hawk forts. I just want to get my flowers for this because I'm doing a great job. Uh, yeah, can I keep going? Actually, can I keep... you got it. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Star gleam said lion bells. <laughs> I I I die for you. It makes me gay with happiness. Lion blaze, are you a dot 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 homosexual? Question mark slash Ooh. question mark slash question mark slash two. That's against God. Said uh, gleam star. Said uh, stained gleam star because there's an st in front of this. Uh, so our gas was was her clan becoming queer? Bet before he could answer, he did. <laughs> he died. But before he a could answer, he died. Nope, said Gleam Star. He was my brother's father. I will avenge thou. <laughs> I will avenge thou. Was is, is, is spelled correctly? So switching prop. to old English halfway through is really funny. <laughs> when you when you're when you're in your English ninth grade English class and yeah. you just read six Shakespeare for the first time. Mm -hmm. She lapped at, le uh, leaped at Holly Leaf. Holly fail, uh, Holly fail, lagged and run. It's, it's too lar late. She meowed. <laughs> Lock behind you. <laughs> Look behind you. Sorry. Can I do the rest? Yeah, you can do the rest. Okay. I just want to have fun. I just wanted to, that's, uh. <laughs> Starling looked. Tiger Claw was scratching Don Sparkle. She ran up. The he cat clawed him. He ran away. Get out of here, hackykin, she said. <laughs> it's too dangerous. I means no, said Hawk Frost. I love you, my dear. I, w I won't leave you. But the cats were going. Tiger Star lagged sadly. He may have defeated us this time, he said, but next time we'll be stronger. Then he left. And then Holly lef Leaf left. Then ThunderClan was safe. Then Lion <laughs> Bleez. <laughs> That's safe. It'll ever, can ever be. Since Lion Blaze, uh, uh, Blaze died, said Gleamstar, I need a new deputy. Uh, Jazzpaw, come here. Jazzpaw came. Jazzpaw, I want to make you a warrior so you give me my new deputy. Jazzpaw smiled. She was so happy. <laughs> Jazzpaw, from now on, you'll be Jazz Song. Such a stupid. And jazz Song. Also, you're my deputy. Anyone have a problem with that? Uh, anyone have a fucking problem with that? She was mean because she was sad. No, the cat said obediently. They knew he was sad. They respected it. Lion Blaze was her after all. <laughs> Beside, <laughs> Beside, most of the cats thought Stargleam was kawaii when she was mad. Her eyes robbled. God, I'm going insane listening to this. She, she and Hawkrot slept. Not like that! There's not make They would do that yet. Don't remember the commandments? They're not married. So they wouldn't do that yet, don't you remember the commandments? I'm sorry it took so long, but I think I did real good on these chat cathers. I was tired the last one. I was tired the last one was long. Yeah, I'm, t I'm tired too, actually. Finally something that I can connect with, with the author. It took long enough to <laughs> finally feel an emotional like, yeah, I'm also tired. I love doing these. <laughs> You know what I also love doing? Yeah. Ads. <laughs> fuck it right to the yeah, fucking ads. Let's fucking fuck go. this shit. I don't need to analyze this shit. <laughs> fuck it, guys. Watch an ad. <laughs> Welcome to the ad break. Hello. Hey. Hi. Are you enjoying this podcast? Yes, I am. And you better like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell if you're on YouTube and raise five stars on Apple and Spotify podcast. Podcast. And if you want to help support the podcast financially, the blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash APWSTR. You get exclusive content, ad free releases, and mm -hmm. early releases. Nice. At least audio gets early, you know? And also, if you donate five or more dollars a month, you get your name at the end of the podcast and in the description. Yeah. And also, if you're a YouTube member. Yeah, if you're a YouTube member, you also get added at the end of the description. You won't get the exclusive content, but you get emotes when we live stream. Yes. Which we haven't done in a long time, but yeah. we will do soon. Eventually, yeah. It's been a rough month. <laughs> yeah, it's been wild. Sorry, everyone. But yeah, and, uh, you also get access to the Discord, and sometimes we do watch alongs to Matt Damon movies. Yes, we do While now. we do the Matt Damon podcast, which is also an exclusive podcast you get on the Patreon. Eventually, we're going to do Dogma, but that's going to be in like maybe a month. Yeah, months. honestly, yeah. At, the rate, at the rate we're going, yeah. It's pretty slow, yeah. 
Um, okay, but yeah, let me see if there's any coffees because if you go over to buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSTR for three dollars a coffee, you can have a say whatever you want to say as long as it's not racist, homophobic, sexist, etc. Transphobic, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have a coffee this I don't week. I think so either. We have a bunch of new patrons patrons this week, so thank you guys yeah, for thanks. being patrons. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Um blah, 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 blah. I think that's it then, right? I think so. Yeah, there's no coffees. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's all the ways to do it. We appreciate all the support as we slowly get to a point where we can make more content. We're gonna mm. keep making more content. We will. We eventually. I'm gonna fucking. I'm putting my fucking foot down. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna try Switch streaming soon. Yeah. And I'm gonna try and make YouTube video. I'm gonna try and make YouTube. All video. right. I'm gonna try and. I'm gonna. I'm really. I really just want to fight. <laughs> yeah, you really do. I just want to. Just want to fight someone. <laughs> I just want to beat someone up. I don't know. And this is like the best way to do it. I'll fight AJR in the ring. Yeah, put AJR in the fucking <laughs> put ring. Put AJR yeah. in the fucking ring. I'll do it. God. But yeah, uh, back to the show. Yeah. It's the Reddit segment. It's the AJR segment. <laughs> you brought AJR in my head. I'm sorry. I just had to bring him up. Uh, but yeah, it's the Reddit segment. So, Sarah. Reddit. Reddit. Did you, did you, re- you read it on Reddit, bro? I did read Like Reddit the name on- of the website? <laughs> That's bullying, what you just did. <laughs> oh, yeah, what you did yeah. isn't bullying? Yeah, it's fine, because I was acting. Am I the asshole for sending my wife away and not checking up on her? I was gonna read this one, because apparently it's one of the top ones on uh, Am I the Devil right now. Yeah. But, yeah, okay, I'm ready. Let's let's go. Which the Am I the Devil quote t- uh, title is, What the fuck? Husband of the year. Not... <laughs> Borat voice. Parentheses Borat voice. Not. And eventually after after this, it's, she's not she's not gonna be his wife. His wife. <laughs> I'm not, not my st- wife. Uh, your husband of the year. Not. <laughs> okay. Bringing it back 2005, baby. Oh. God. Okay. So yeah. Sorry. Okay. So. Yep. Am I the asshole for sending my wife away and not checking up on her? My 28 male wife, 24, has a very strong bond with her family. Last month, her both parents moved to live with her brothers in Australia, and she's been feeling very down since then. I'm definitely at fault for not making enough time for her these past few weeks due to excessive workload. This all led to constant petty fights initiated by her. It started to get really suffocating and frustrating for both of us, so I asked her if for a few days she can go live at her parents' house that they've left in her care. She did not say anything, but packed her stuff and left in the morning. I only wanted her to have some time alone to clear her head. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. You were just like telling her to get the fuck out of the... I assume she needs space and called to ask her if she reached there safe and needs any... I assumed she needs space after I told her to leave. <laughs> yeah, husband of the year, not. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I assume she needs space and called to ask her if she reached their safe and needs any grocery since it's been a month that house is empty. She didn't pick pick up my calls, but sent a text later to inform me that she's there. I thought she really wants to spend this time alone, so I decided to not bother her. Why are you a lot of a lot of uh, weight on the words I assumed and I thought? Yeah, we talked very briefly over messages a few times after that. On Tuesday, I took a day off work to go see her since it had been over a week and she didn't return or even call. Got to know she's been sick for days and is on leave from work. When I asked her why she didn't inform me, she said she did not want to bother me. I took her to see a doctor and turned out she has jaundice and is four weeks pregnant. What? Whoa, what the fuck? Oh my god. God. Now she's back home, but unusually reserved, and I feel like I am the reason. Why is that? My (laughs) intention was to only give her space and have some time for myself. Never intended to hurt her. Am I the asshole? Throw away account. Wow. Okay, so info. Did you tell her to get out and stay at her parents, or did you communicate your concerns and her potential need for space? Unfortunately, I did not. She is a smart woman. I assumed she was aware of our need for space. (laughs) Literally just said, get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Go go to your fucking parents' house. 
I just impregnated you and you have something <laughs> wrong with your liver, but get the fuck get out, out of here. here. Yeah. Go live by yourself, bitch. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck, actually? Holy shit. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Okay, so all right, recap. Let's play. Let's Jack play that fucking back. <laughs> so okay, so you 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 fucking. Somebody said, "Wife, I'm feeling really alone and isolated." Husband, what the fuck? Get out of my fucking house! <laughs> fucking out! <laughs> what? You're not communicating with your wife. Wife doesn't like that. You're like, all right, you dumbass. Fucking, fucking get out! Get out! Uh, I'll show you what it's like to be alone. So, yeah, let's go With through the... With a baby and jaundice, <laughs> apparently. You know, this is one of those ones where it's like, you really have to dig to find the, like... You know, some of these ones, they're just outright saying, I don't know, I beat the shit out of her. Or, like, you know, they say, like, what they did wrong. But this one, it's like, he says what he does wrong, but then he, like, qualifies it so much... <laughs> that he's, like... He's trying to bury the lead under, like, all the shit around. Like, she didn't text me, she didn't do this, didn't she didn't me, do that. You know. And it's like, okay, so her parents left... So she was down. You decided to work more. Because at any point you could have left work yeah. and come home and said, sorry, my you wife is down. You overworked yourself. She was more alone. You never communicated with her. Yeah. You told her to leave. She She's now left. completely alone in her parents' house that for the parents that left her. Oh, you uh, texted yeah, her a couple of times too little too late. You told her to leave your house. Yeah. And because then you, she like, was too depressing yeah, for you to deal with. You know, because, you know, fucking bringing down the mood. Now you find out that she's four weeks pregnant and has jaundice, and you're upset at her for not talking to you? Yeah, that's the that's the problem here. That's the... That's why she's the asshole? Yeah. Because she... Because she has jaundice and sad, pregnant. Is sad, is sick, and won't talk to you? Jesus. That's crazy. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you got a fundamental lack of respect yeah, I have a, for your no. partner. That's just it's an absolutely no clue. Yeah, like what your partner wants or needs because mm -hmm. you just won't talk to him. Which <laughs> fucking baller move. And then he changes it to like she just, needs space. She needs space. Like this man has the communication ability of a fucking potato. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Just dogpiling all of your insecurities on someone else. Yeah. Like, like fucking just straight. Like fucking. You know, I feel alone. So she probably feels alone too. Yeah, you get out. You get out. You 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 feel this. I'm mean, like I mean I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Kind of pretty asshole though. Yeah. Pretty obviously the. Is that a, is that a devil? Uh, probably. Yeah. I don't, I mean I don't know if it's a devil. I mean yeah I guess I, mean, I guess pretty, maybe. Once again, it's the. It's kind of like dude, the the actions are worse than the intentions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So pretty bad actions. It's okay to be upset at them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, fucking well, solved, solved it. Solved no, it. Didn't. Yeah, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Chill nice podcast. Easy one. Yeah. Chill eleven fifty two in the morning podcast. Mm -hmm. It's not even twelve yet. It's not even twelve yet. God, we're halfway done. We're rising grinders, dude. Yeah, we are. Uh, <laughs> am I the asshole? Am I the asshole for not carrying my girlfriend's moving boxes up the stairs? Okay, this one I'm excited for because you read this and you were very like oh, reactive. No. Yeah. Oh no. My girlfriend, 26 female, and I, 30 male, finally moved in together after dating for nine years. Do the math. We have been moving in our things little by little. My girlfriend packed up her things from her room at her mom's and we drove them over. And I'm sorry, Sarah. I am sorry. I am genuinely sorry. Wait, 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 wait a minute. He's 30? Yes. He's 21 and she's 26 and they've been dating for nine years. So that's... 17. 17 and 21. Yeah. Man, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's right not, there. It's right there. It's right there on the edge, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we get benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I think he's just outside of the Romeo Juliet law. Yeah. So, yeah. And legally, since it's legally good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. I, I, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Date as many 17 year olds as you fucking want because they've been together nine years, so it must work. <laughs> that must be fine. No one called the cops, so you know. God. It must be fine. My my girlfriend It's okay to break the law, you know, if like it just you never get caught. <laughs> it doesn't cause any damage to anyone. 
Okay. okay. Just go into like small businesses and like steal and walk <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. The small, you're the most mom and pop shop you could ever. Yeah, like stealing from Walmart. That is actually Based. is a victimless crime. Yeah. But like, like it'll, your local bookstore to steal a lot of their very expensive. Yeah. Stock. The yeah. big collection. Yeah. Yeah. I actually stole the Bo Burnham four disc uh, from Park Ave. So you know. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. Sweet. My girlfriend packed up her things from her room and her at her mom's, and we drove them over. She insisted on bringing all her books. There ended up being 10 boxes of them. That's a lot of books. So we got to our new apartment building, and I unloaded the 10 boxes of books from the truck and brought them into the hallway. I told her she was responsible for carrying them up the stairs to our apartment. I love it when a boyfriend talks to his girlfriend uh, like, like a bot, like a, like like a he's literal her like, dad. Yeah. <laughs> I was not carrying those heavy ass boxes of books. After unloading, I sat in the van and waited. After a while, she came out and asked if I would help her with the rest. She had five boxes left, and it was taking forever. She was carrying them up one by one, and they were really heavy. I told her, no, it is her junk. She wanted to bring those books, then she can carry them up one flight of stairs. My girlfriend got a bit upset with me later on that night, saying she wished I had helped her, and then we argued about it. Not a good start to our new living situation. Am I the asshole, or she, or should she, or she should be responsible for her own crap? Can't write. She is not physically disabled or anything like that. Before, like that, before anyone gets on me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Just what? <laughs> Why would you bring that up? That's fucking weird. Yeah, that's so weird. <laughs> First comment. He seems nice. Flash ass. <laughs> Um, I don't, there's so many tiny red flags. I'm not going to talk about the age thing. Yeah, it's not talking about the age Fuck thing. Fuck off. Yeah. Not going to do it. You're going to try, shut up. <laughs> you're going to, you're trying to get me, man. I'm trying to fucking get you. No, I don't care. Whatever. Age yeah. thing, whatever. Who cares? But me, but later, uh, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, we'll cross that bridge. Yeah. These people, there's no talking them out of this. Fine, yeah. go ahead. Go get groomed. Sure. Um, fucking... Called books junk. Yeah, you know that's like um, <laughs> it's like that's a pretty good sign of your character. Not good. Yeah, it's <laughs> not good. If he's not interested in books. It's fine, I guess. But it's like, but there's a difference of like calling it like this fucking this junk. It's books. It's books. It's yeah. It's learning. It's 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 like the sharing of ideas. The yeah. written word. But no, it's junk. I would be. I. It's like a personal thing for me that I'm like. Oh, so you're an idiot. You're dumb. You're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you don't read. Is that why? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's really like fucking. Um. Yeah. I will say like. Also, it's one flight of stairs, yeah. and you just can't be like a little bit helpful. It's ten boxes too. It's ten boxes up one flight of stairs. She's doing them one at a time. And he told her to do it like now. Yeah. And, and then like, waited well, in the van. Well, like. If, so okay, so this is what I think. Like, yeah, if someone says, "Hey, could you do this thing for me?" I'm not going to help you. You should do it at your own pace. That's what I think you should yeah. be allowed to do. You know what I mean? I think what you should do is just not do it. I just think it. it it's but it's also different if it needs to be commute. Like if the trash is bad, and you say to me, Sarah, can you do the trash? I'll be like, Yeah, okay. Um. I'm got something else going on right now, so can I do it later? And yeah. then you can be like, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever. Just make sure it's done by blank, blank, blank. Yeah. That's like That's a fine. healthy That's communication. Yeah. That's something that would happen in an office. That's something that would happen, you know, just like from peer to peer. Yeah. That's not a dad telling a daughter or a boss telling an employee what to do. You got to do this yeah. right now. Saying you have to do this right now by yourself by in yourself. the way that I want as quickly as possible. And I'm grading you on it. Yeah. And I'm going on break. So and I'm going to go on break. Yeah. And this needs to be done by the time I get back. Yeah. That is a parent. That's a boss. That's a power imbalance. Yeah. Whoa. Who would have thought <laughs> that might have happened in this relationship? Crazy. Totally legal. Yeah, totally. Everything is legal about it. <laughs> if everything's legal, why is there a power imbalance? I don't know. <laughs> I just can't get it in through. I don't know basic math. <laughs> but two yeah, no. plus two divided by three. I don't know what the answer is. 
But yeah, no, so like literally like, yeah, just like two and three quarters. I don't know. I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really like that like really unnecessary last dig to try and make him seem like she could have done it. She's not like fucking she got moving legs. She's not physically disabled or anything. You're an asshole. You're just a huge like, dick. Yeah. It, this isn't like, did you break the law? This isn't the lawyer subreddit of, did I break the law? Yeah. This is, are you an asshole? Are you a fucking asshole? Yeah. Yeah. If someone did that uh, and I saw it, I'd be like, yeah, you're kind even of Even if dick. it didn't happen to me, I'd be like, that guy's an asshole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Obviously. That's, that's all that needs to happen to qualify you into being an asshole is that you're an asshole. You're a fucking asshole. Yeah. And that's why this subreddit is created because it's difficult to know sometimes yeah yeah but somehow it's difficult for this one to <laughs> there's sometimes it really is like people really just think they can do anything with no consequence like fuck a 17 year old yeah yeah huh god we solved that though we did i'm sorry i saw it and i just i just i gravitated to it you really did didn't you it was like it was like just the idea of him just like sitting in the van listening to like imagine dragons or something <laughs> Why is it a oh, the misery! <laughs> oh, it's gonna want to and be she's, my enemy. And this, this groomed child is literally like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Josh, she's 26 and she's not disabled, so she should do all the manual labor. Expect yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even if she wasn't groomed, do some shit for your girlfriend. Come on, it's the gentlemanly thing to do. Nice. Maybe you both can do it together. You don't have to do the entire thing. But like shit, man, you're not ready for a relationship. Clearly not, yeah. If you just are you're like, not you have a problem. In. You know, it's kind of a sour note to start this moving in together thing. When well, I, I picked mean, her up from her mom. Well, that's a red flag of being like, I mean, I don't know, I guess not if you're also like this, but like if you're like exact, like everything is a, you know, we have a scorecard of yeah. you do this, I do this, you do this, I do this, and it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, or it's like your shit's your shit, my shit's my shit. Yeah, it's not a relationship, right, isn't fucking, it? No sharing. Yeah, you should share. Yeah. You know, hey. you gotta share your body with me, though. That's it. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Exa <laughs> that's exactly the thing. That's exactly what it is. Your, that bo your yeah. body is mine, mine, though. But all my stuff is mine. All my stuff's mine. Yeah. And not yours. <laughs> not yours. No. You better not. You better not fucking. You better not touch my fucking Clerks Two DVD. You're my you property. Okay? You're my property. And Go I and property. do chores. Yeah. Make me a sandwich, please. Not please, actually, no, sorry, fuck you. Yeah, no, actually, I don't have to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you should just do it. Okay. You're younger than me. <laughs> All right, am I the asshole for complaining about my daughter's period talk? <laughs> <sighs> my daughter, female 16, is very period positive, as are all her friends. She's also very open, I suppose. The incident that caused this was a recent trip we took over Easter. She brought her lifelong best friend, whose mom is very hippie, and I believe where she got the ideals from. What the fuck? Anyway, on our drive over... Brainwashed. <laughs> really, really trying hard to not write the word brainwash. I know, I, I feel the energy from this post of, like, the B button's right there. I can fucking start it. If I press it, I can, I can type the rest of the word I in. I can drive this, these two children off a cliff right now. Yeah. Anyway, on our drive over, my daughter's period started. She was laughing about it with her friends, and we pulled over to buy her some sanitary products, at which point, in the store, my daughter proclaimed, I can literally feel it falling out of my vagina. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's She's pretty... so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yo, I can, I can, like... She's so fucking real for that, though. Like, that, Bro, is, such straight... a, that is such a common woman experience. Yeah. you can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fucking, yes. You can. So it's funny to hear a kid say that because it's like, I mean, and it's also funny that a man got upset about it and yeah. got embarrassed because every other woman in the store has been like, yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> yeah, just trying to unite or just over AFAB, like, a, yeah, yeah, AFAB you know, yeah, person. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like literally fucking, a, if you have a menstrual me cycle, too. yeah, fucking, yeah. yeah. Fucking, yeah, no, that's really funny. That like if you you just you have this fucking you have a uterus and this is like something that's like so fucking like like I don't know I feel like demonized a little bit you know mm -hmm. and you're trying to connect with other people it's about a it that's function, fine yeah. yeah it's like saying I'm fucking sweating a lot God there's so much fucking sweat I'm like yeah exactly and I can be like yeah bro, same. like bro it's, I could feel the sweat 
Yeah. That's what it should be. You exactly, know? yeah. You're secreting a liquid. But no, it's, it's it has to deal with vaginas, and vaginas are icky. Because I put my penis in there. Yeah, and I don't want to think of them as icky. Yeah, because it's my daughter. I don't I want to think, about think of penis. sex as gross, and I wouldn't want to do it again. But it's like, it, period's not sex, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know, yeah. It's completely opposite. Okay, yeah. I was humiliated. Her and her friend giggled over it. And if it weren't for the risk to my seats, I probably would have walked out and ha- had her wait until the next stop. In the car, I had a strong word with her about her behavior, at which point my wife told me I was being too much and to leave her alone. She was just being an immature teen. I still didn't think it was appropriate, but left it. Over our vacation, she continued to make comments. Her friend also came on her period, and then there were several hours of blaming her for pulling her cycle off. Parentheses question mark. <laughs> you said, wait, you don't know that? This guy doesn't know this? I, I this guy doesn't know about periods at all because yeah. he thinks these she's gonna stain his seats. You know what this guy does? He uh, every time his wife has a period, he just sends her to her parents' house. Yeah, he does like the in the olden days. There used to be this like thing you'd send the women up the mountain that were yeah, all menstruating. Exactly. And they could all sit around with each other and menstruate. Yeah, there's a book about it. I think. Um, I think it's called like the Red Tent or something. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Overall, it was uncomfortable, and when we came home, I told my daughter I did not appreciate her ruining my vacation with her period talk. Pretty strong. Pretty strong. <laughs> she told me to lighten up. Hell yeah. And Hell yeah. if I couldn't handle having a daughter, I should have used a condom. Ooh. Burn! Get her. Get her, man. Fuck yeah. She brings that up often, which also grates on my nerves. Why? Because it's just because she's so, right. Yeah, so like that's, funny to if think that's the vibe that you're giving off. Like this daughter's bullying her dad. Yeah, because he's a fucking stupid man. It's Who so didn't funny. wear a condom. Yeah, yeah. She's like, nah, if you didn't want me, then you should have fucking worn a condom, bitch. That's yeah. like amazing. I want my kid to have that amount of confidence. Hell yeah, yeah. Ultimately, I left it as neither of us were backing down, and I try to keep a calm home. But my wife can tell I'm still upset and is telling me I'm acting like the immature teen now. Yeah. She, yeah, because your daughter did an Uno reverse. Like, oh. no, bitch, I'm doing what I want. Yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> and you were like, now you're yeah, the teen you're not, sulking. Yeah, because you're, you, you, you fucking suck as a parent. Yeah. That your kid doesn't want to talk to you. <laughs> or if they talk to you, they're to dunk on you. Yeah. And you put it in, and he put it in here. I try to keep a calm home. I try to keep a calm home here. Like, you have any say in what's going on. Yeah, I have no control. Yeah, you're getting cucked, dude. Dude, you're getting cucked so hard, you have to type about how much control you have in the Reddit post. Yeah, on Reddit. Asking for advice. Yeah. Um, She's a teen girl, and uh, she's a teen girl, and in the first generation, fully able to be open about things that were previously unspoken. I understand where she's coming from, but I'm still allowed to be uncomfortable. Nope. And not want to hear about it. If she wants to talk about her period with her friend, go ahead. But in private. Yeah, keep that shit behind doors. I get to talk about how much I come, though. Right. That's me. We need to all talk about come. Yeah. Come, 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 come. <laughs> come, 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 come. Yeah. Um, the good thing is I think the daughter's going to be all right. I think, yeah, I think the daughter's <laughs> going to be A-OK. God. This is why girls need to support girls, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I don't know, man. It's really fucking... God, what an insecure guy, dude. It's funny. It's really funny. Literally, who cares? Who gives a shit, no, man? No, literally, I yeah. don't give a fuck. I remember when people got mad at that Baymax cartoon because the girl started her period and she was freaking out and he went to the um, to the to the convenience store to buy her sanitary products and he was like, what's the best, you know, yeah. thing for her? And someone goes, oh, this is what I use for my daughter. This is what my daughter uses. And yeah. then, like, everybody hands him sanitary products, yeah. including a trans man. Yeah. And people were freaking out about the trans man being in there. <sighs> God. Nobody, because they were trying to imply, they they didn't realize he was a trans man. They thought he was, was a, man a man that was going to transition into being a woman who's try- buying feminine products to use on himself to simulate periods People because they don't stupid. like they're, they're so dumb we're, yeah we're dealing with like that's really dumb holy shit isn't that so stupid that's really dumb too because i feel like i i think this is another thing that's really like i remember like growing up in a culture of like 
guys like you know like the like the classic like comedians joking about like mm -hmm. the embarrassment they would feel having to go buy like tampons or like pads for their partners <laughs> yeah you know and part of me is like just go and fucking buy it <laughs> You fucking pussy. Most like, come attractive on. attractive thing you've ever said. Let's go buy it. <laughs> Who cares? I don't know. Maybe because I grew up around women, you know, women that have, you know, the fucking, the period. And, yeah, and your, and your family talks about it, too. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know how open they are. I feel like. I think sometimes they're a little too open. I'm not going to talk about it on this fucking show, but like. Yeah. Fucking. Uh, no. Yeah. Like, literally, like, um, I don't know. I feel like just fucking like, what what is it? Cloth cotton? Like, whatever mm. it's made out of. Just in a little shape. Honestly, I don't fucking You buy know. a fucking shirt. Practically same materials, you know, fucking just different use. I'm gonna look that up, actually. Yeah, what are really tampons made out of? I just kind of shove that shit up there. Well, if you, like, if you, like, buy fucking, I don't know, like, diapers or something, you know, or, like, fucking paper products of any kind, you know? Like, whatever it happens to be made out of. Cotton, rayon, or a blend of the two, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, like, shit. <laughs> Why is there such, what, it's stupid that there's a stigma around it. Especially for something that's like a bodily function, you know what I mean? It should it should be like weird. Like, I don't know. Like, I do get uncomfortable, I think, with the idea of buying condoms in stores. Because it's like, I'm going to go have sex. I'm going to go have sex. That's very different, though, yeah. from like, oh, she's fucking bleeding out. Let's let's let's, let's get this covered, please. It's like diapers, yeah. It's yeah, like, exactly. Like, if you have a kid, them. yeah, you're going to get diapers. You're not going to be, like, ashamed that your son shits his pants. Yeah, right. Like, you know? I mean, that's yeah, stupid. Yeah, exactly, you know? Yeah. God. I don't know. It's really fucking... I don't know. Or, like, I guess... I don't know. Buying a bunch of toilet paper or something? Like, yeah. everyone has everyone to do shits. it. Everyone shits. Everyone shits. Everyone pisses. Yeah. It's, like, immaturity to me because it's, like... I remember being sh ashamed of buying tampons and, like, pads and stuff. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, my mom... Oh, my God, it was the worst. I basically had to lie every single time I had a period to my mom... Because she would freak out and she would either like up the abuse because I was more emotional or she would use it as to describe like why I'm upset, you know? Yeah. yeah like you're, oh, you're just on your period. Yeah. And I wasn't really allowed to have tampons. I was only really allowed to have pads. And if I asked for tampons, it was like when I asked for birth control, which was to stop my hormones from going crazy. Because yeah. I had really bad periods when I started. I had like... I wouldn't have periods for like two or three months and then I would have the worst one ever. Yeah. And um, I was like, I need like, you know, but we went to a uh, gynecologist when I was 16 to like start doing that. And um, they were like, we should fucking put you on birth control. And my mom was like, but she's not having, she's, you're not having sex, right? Don't have sex. And then I got on it and my mom was like, oh, new age. My 16 year old daughter's on birth control. Whoa. So dumb. Which I really started hate. the paranoia of, are you having sex? Who are you? Yeah, and like, Ugh. yeah, and it's like, Ugh. I really, I, I don't know. I really think that's like, God, that's so fucking like. I also dumb. remember like having my period during like Thanksgiving at my brother's house, and they had a dog, mm. and um, they had a trash can that was like outside of like it was like right next to their toilet. Oh yeah, they threw it away, and the dog got into it, and everyone was so pissed at me. You got to tell how you do. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. God. I was, and that was also like, I was like 17 or 18. Jesus. I don't know. I really don't like the stigmatization of periods. I don't know. I think it's like really. Yeah. Like, why is it a secret? Yeah. Why have I been keeping a secret for like tw almost 20, like 10 years, 15 20 years. years. <laughs> yeah. I've been bleeding since I was five. Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think like, I think it was 12. Like thirteen years. I'm trying to like be as supportive as I can, but like I just get the years wrong. Yeah, like you just have no idea. Yeah, you've been doing this your whole life. <laughs> no. I think I started kind of early when I was twelve. Oh, okay, that's so, fair. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck, man. I think it's. I think it's dumb. I don't know. I blame education system more than anything. Just not teaching people shit. I don't know. I feel like yeah, I had to learn it the hard way, which was googling. <laughs> You Googled it? Well, not Googling it, but I think, like, you know, I guess not even the hard way. I think I got, I lucked out because I had, like, sisters, female sisters. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think Fe it was relatively, yeah. yeah a female sister. I'm sorry. Fucking, uh, <laughs> fucking. A AFAB? Is that what you mean? AFAB, yeah. Yeah. The side female birth sisters, you know, so, like, yeah. they've had periods their whole life. Yeah. And fucking, um, 
Uh, yeah, no, like literally, like just having tampons in the house the whole time. Yeah, and I never like got grossed out, which was fucking amazing when I started dating you too. It was the first time I've ever been in a house where there were just like a lot of tampons yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and like I think right now, if we, when we go back to the parents' house, I'm going to bet there's still a bunch of tampons there. And like you know, I think your mom, she's past menopause, right? Yeah. Yeah. So she doesn't. Yeah, she, she doesn't. doesn't she anymore. just keeps them for people, just in case. Yeah. Not even for her kids. Like just did people if they show up. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> that's we'll fucking say, amazing. Like, yeah. So I don't know, and I, I really <laughs> don't like the. I don't know, and I hate the stigmatization of, like, birth control, and it should just be, like, free at this point. No, oh, yeah. Like, if condoms are free, make birth control free. <laughs> like, obviously, it's just, it's like, you know. Saying, oh, know. wow, my 16-year-old is on birth control. That's crazy. What a new age. You're is, fucking you, right. <laughs> you don't think about fascism in the, that moment, but you do think about fascism when abortion, the rights to abortion are banned. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. And you do think about fascism when the birth control, uh, the day after pill is might be illegal as well. Yeah, right. And that's crazy. You do start thinking about fascism when it starts coming for birth control, but you don't think about the little steps. The I, little like, steps. Yeah, of yeah. like the little dominoes. Don't talk lead about to your the period. Big domino. Don't talk about it. You're not allowed to talk about it. It's gross. Don't talk about it. Teenage girls talking about it should be silenced. You know. Yeah. It should be an individual shame that you have for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you should worry Never about it all the time. Never talk about it with anyone. You should make fun of a girl who um, you notice that she's on her period. Yeah. Because if it's you notice that she's doing something wrong, she's not a real woman. And remember, if they do anything uh, the opposite, they're fucking hippies. And fascism and they should be is killed. white supremacy. They're all related. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all yeah. misogynistic, obviously, and it all works to uphold... Yeah, white supremacy. Oh, not what? Just white guys. The man. Yeah, yeah the man. Yeah. <laughs> I am in this. Hold on. Sorry. All right. Now in this example, I am the man. Finally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me. I I don't think in, individual men are the problem. I think like. No, I'm just the I'm just the spokesperson right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, like you know, the system. Yeah. No, the system itself is like very fucked. Uh, Keeping people from thinking that they deserve to feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Or yeah. like have a, a decent life of some sort, you yes. know? Yeah. At any point. At it, any point. It it goes against the concept of one guy having all the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. Solved it. Yeah. But it looks like that guy's getting cucked by his daughter a lot. Yeah. So, so honestly, I think though she'll be fine. You know, the, the tide's turn turning. And she's never gonna talk to him after she's 18, 18, yeah. That's great. Pretty epic. All right, I'm going to see if I can find... I think it should be in my history, at least. Sorry. Am I the asshole for telling my brother he's a deadbeat and he's throwing away the opportunity our parents worked to give us? Okay. My 20 female brother, 25 male, and I's parents are immigrants. They came here and both worked 60 to 80 hours a week while raising us to give us the best chance in life, and I'll always be grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm taking uh, five college credits while working 30 to 40 hours a week. Jesus Christ. I, I have no free time, but I'll never complain because my parents did much more for much less. My brother is a complete loser and disgrace to our family. Okay. He didn't go to college, and he refused to work more than 20 hours a week, so our parents threw him out when he was 18. He still only works part time and lives in a shitty basement apartment with roommates. It's terrible and shit like uh, like this is why people are against immigrants. Okay. Our parents are ashamed to even mention they have a son, and I don't blame them. He says he wants to work to live, not live to work, yeah. but he's just a leech. I finally got sick of him asking us to visit the rat hole he calls a home, so I did just to, so I did just to let him have it. I told him he was a shitty son and brother, and we didn't con don't consider him either anymore. He's just a freeloader who's dragging society down with him, and the world would be better without him. Our parents didn't work themselves half to death so he could be a la the lazy piece of shit like him. He even eventually just said that if I if all I came there to, to, to do was yell at him, I should leave. So I did, and I told him unless he turns his life around, he'll never see me again. Some of my friends said I was being too hard on him, hmm. and, it's, and it's his life, so I should leave him alone. But it gives immigrants in my family a bad name, and he needs to shape up or get out of his li this life. I don't regret what I said. Hey, okay, yeah, all right. So it gives immigrants a bad name to racists. Yeah, and that's um, you know, 
that's the only like that's like the weird like kind of door opening to just kind of be like it's only really against my family yeah it's it's you know it's one of those things where it's like i don't know if i would call you an asshole for for your actions yeah it's shitty because like your brother he just realized he's not his whole life shouldn't be around making capital yeah you know and if that's gonna cause a fucking you know him to go no contact with his family because they don't believe that there's a possibility of him having a successful life without being very rich or working or spending your entire life working. Yeah. And which you seem to parrot also, which probably means that you're like the golden child of this family and you feel like you need to support your family, which is normal. Like yeah, you, it's yeah. normal to feel like you should support your family. Right. Mm. But with the uh, prejudices that your parents grew up with, the harsh prejudices that still exist today you know, taking on that trauma and the only way to combat it is by being better, you know? Yeah. The, by being extremely hardworking and being the perfect immigrant. And mm. that's not something that exists. Just like the perfect victim doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Mm. So, I mean, it, it to me, it just sounds like you have a lot of trauma from being, in, being from an immigrant family, being raised by people who have experienced harsh racism and probably you dealing with harsh racism yourself, which your brother probably also does. And you took it out on your brother. Mm. So it's like a complex scenario. You know what I mean? It's not a, no one's really an asshole here. You know what I mean? The asshole is is society. Yeah. Yeah. The people that made your parents feel like they have to to work 80 hours a week each. Just a fucking... And it shouldn't be like that. You shouldn't have to. Yeah, and I will say, I think the the weird part to me is that, like, there's not really any proof of him being a leech, because he no, still cause he works. No, because he works and he pays his rent and he lives somewhere. Yeah. If he were white, that would be fine. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah. So why are there different rules? Because yeah. race of racism, yeah. Yeah. Ah, that was just crazy to me. Yeah. It's just like a... What does Reddit say? I'm interested because now well, we have to put it in was, the binary, right? So what do they say? So the re- so this is where I think, yeah, I think that is it like a split because it was from "Am I the Devil?" is where it was from. Interesting. Okay. So let me see. Fucking sometimes "Am I the Devil?" gets it wrong. I think you know, and yeah, and I will say like the first comment is like uh, it's it's quoting he just a freeloader who's dragging society down. But there's no evidence of him being he is a freeloader or is lazy. He doesn't go to college and he doesn't work for a time. Okay? Sounds like he's still getting by just fine. Yeah. There's no mention of him begging for money or doing a bunch of drugs. He's just hyper judgmental. Well, drugs when does also doesn't make you a leech. It makes you yeah. an addict. You know, some people have like weird <laughs> so, yeah, opinions. Like very yeah. weird ready. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I think people are pointing out that like fucking um what is it? Uh what is it? Uh, oh, wait, what the fuck? Apparently autism's getting thrown into this mix right now. Because, why? like, I think someone, cousin works on a farm, uh, he doesn't make much money, he's happy, enjoying his life, he's not relying on his parents, he's not going on lavish vacations, we don't like that anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking... I know someone mentioned, like, it's hard to get through, like, uh, that they were an autistic person. This was a long time ago. I think last year. Because I was talking about how I couldn't get through training because it was so boring. Yeah. And they were like, well, this is actually an autism thing. It's very difficult to like pay attention and get through training. And yeah. I was like, I don't know if that was it. I think it was just a boring training. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's like a thing where it's like difficult listening to authority and stuff like that. So maybe I I don't know. I think I contributed yeah. more to systemic issues. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like, so I guess, uh, okay, so what happened was my eldest son is moderate severe autistic and I did more in the life I expected from him, but I'm a better person because I adjusted what I wanted for him and my youngest. I decided that being as independent as possible and happy was more important for both of them than a paycheck and a big house. Mm-hmm. So I continue to bust my ass for a paycheck so I'll be able to be happy. That's the choice I make for my life. So I guess, I don't know. It's very okay. much like, yeah. So, so that's like, why someone You have an idea for your son. But then it doesn't. It doesn't work out for some reason. Yeah. And I will say that's kind of like crazy. I think that's kind of, a, that's what kind of, it's shitty that's not just the the sister, it's also the parents, too, kind of, like, upholding that. Well, it makes more sense. If the sister wasn't raised to be like that and then was like that, it's like, where did you get that from? Yeah, you know? so then it's just this whole family, like... Yeah, like, anytime someone says something insane like that, I go, where did you hear that? What, who is actually talking? You yeah. Know? Is it is it your mom it's usually your mom it's yeah. usually your dad it's usually someone that said that shit to you and then you're just kind of going along with it that was repeating something from 
someone before them. Yeah. You know? And, and it's just a cycle. It's you like know? a game of hateful telephone, you know? Yeah. That true. we just tell these things and a, a generational trauma happens, you know? Hmm. Crazy, man. Yeah. I don't know. That sucks. I don't know. I, as someone who, like, you know, really doesn't want... I don't know. It sucks that like society really makes you like have to work those eighty hours just at that, just for the thought of like, yeah, for the respect. You can be respected. Yeah, that's not what should happen. No. And th the thing about that is, you're not going to be. No. Yeah, you're still like, not going to be respected. Still yeah. not going to be because you're a different color. Yeah, and that's the real tragedy. And that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. God. Yeah. Crazy man. Like Fucking... I'm never going to. You know, people aren't going to. Hold the door open for me as much because I'm not skinny. Yeah. They so because they don't find me attractive, or I'm not 15, so they don't find me attractive. And you know, fucking that's yeah, that's how it is. Is people fucking treat people differently based on assumptions that they make of them, and it could be prejudice. It could be you know, people it could be ageist. If you were in a wheelchair, people will treat you differently. If you're blind, people will treat you differently. Yeah. And some of it is like, yeah, if you need help, you need help. And, you know, accessibility is a thing. But, like, fucking, I don't know. That's just how it is. And it sucks. And it's situations like this are more complicated than asshole or no asshole. That's true. You know? Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Fascinating. 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 Did we solve it? I think we, I think it. we fucking solved it, dude. Yeah, I solved it. So we should never see that story again. Yeah. Because we solved society. Solved society. All right, next story. Next story. Bring up the podcast because I picked like really fucking downer stories. <laughs> oh. I didn't pick funny stories. Oh, yes. I this... didn't pick TikTok stories. <laughs> um, okay. Trigger warning. Trigger warning financial abuse. Oh, no. My 29 husband, 27, is a stay-at-home dad. Oh, oh, fuck it. Let me read the title. Hold on. Blow it all away. Am I the asshole for... Fuck me. <laughs> Am I the asshole for fuck me? Yeah. Am I the asshole for refusing to enable my husband's sister? What? My 29 husband, 27, is a stay-at-home dad. He majored in biology, then dropped out of medical school after not wanting to waste his time. So I worked in research for a while. But then we decided that I should be wor the working parent because I am earning about six figures, which is almost triple what he was earning. This has been a st He has been a stay-at-home dad, but he also took up baking as a hobby when he was dealing with depression during lockdown. So he, s he sort of has a small baking business. He gets like three to six clients a month, or some months he is too busy with the kids to bake. So he normally uses his money to fund his habits and gives his sister money sometimes. He gives her like $20 every day from Chipotle, from Chipotle money to Sephora money. Whenever I warn him, he likes it. Whenever I warn, I, whenever I warn him, he says he likes it because it's only uh, $20 and it's lunch money. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Recently, his sister called him for $200. Apparently her heater turned off and she asked me to send her the money. And he asked me to send her the money. He hasn't taken up cake orders in a while because we have a two-year-old, two-year-old triplets and a four-and-a-half-year-old. Oh, my God. That have all been getting sick one after the other. I told him, no, that she needs to learn to take care of herself. He got upset and then told me that he needed money to buy something on Amazon for himself. I told him, no, because I knew he was going to use it for his sister. We do not have a joint account, but the, these those expenses are for... The, okay. Fuck me, because I'm bad at reading this one today. No, it's okay. It's all good. We do have a joint account, but those expenses are for the kids, and I calculated for gas and their activities, so I will know if he uses them for personal use. I am not going to lie. We are doing very well financially, so $200 wouldn't have hurt me even with four kids. All right, well... <laughs> Well, how about you go fuck yourself? But I feel like his sister, 22, is too grown to be asking for money from 22? him. 22? Too grown? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's too grown to be asking for money from him every other day. He ended up demanding, with no prior discussion, that he decide that he decided on his own... That also, this is written badly. That he decided yeah. on his own that he is going back to work and that I need to start budgeting for childcare. I have tried to have a conversation and he says that there is nothing I can say to change his mind. 
He doesn't understand why I have to ask him why he needs the money when he rarely asks for it. It is true in some sense that he always uses the money he gets from baking for his personal needs, but I feel like he doesn't take that fact... He doesn't take the fact that I paid for the equipment he was using and all the materials he started with when he was in his practicing phase during COVID. So? Yeah. What? Fucking whatever. Basically, like, how I paid for all the, like, podcast equipment No, stuff. I know. I yeah. know. I know what it is. I'm oh, just okay. like, I can't understand yeah, that it doesn't, mentality. Yeah, because you're too focused on the fucking money. Yeah. OP. You fucking I just don't want to enable his sister and want to help her manage her money better and start adulting. And I usually do give him money anytime he asks. I just felt like it was a waste in this case. I feel like him telling me all of a sudden that he doesn't want to be a stay-at-home dad is kind of blindsiding me. And I feel like he is trying to guilt me just because I don't want to enable his sister's bad habits. But in case I'm missing something, am I the asshole? Yeah. Okay, so this is, somebody explained it well. He ended up demanding with no prior discussion that he decided on his own that he is going back to work and that I need to start budgeting for childcare. You know, it's like, okay, so you decided that your husband wants to be a stay-at-home dad, right? Yes, yeah, we're already starting there. You've agreed, you've both agreed. He starts his own business, his own side business for, like, personal money, I guess. Yeah, that's something he can do at home while also... He doesn't have to worry about the bills, but, but he, he also, does have to take care of kids, and also he has a job. Yeah. Right. And yes. you're not giving him any money to... Even though you make six figures, you pay all yeah. the bills, so you have a really high inflation of just, like, money that you can spend for personal use. Yeah, but he doesn't. But he doesn't. Yeah. And he has a sister that whose heater is off. Also, nobody's yeah, mentioning heater that. Yeah, heater is the like kind of the big deal. Is like that's a that's a waste. It, that's, that's like not a, a fucking waste. That's like a fucking uh, uh, emergency. Yeah, especially if you're like yeah, if this is happening like right now and like you're in a colder climate, like shit. Yeah, you're you're fucked. Yeah, you need that shit to live. If the AC <laughs> was broken down here, yeah, we would fucking. It yeah. would be an emergency. It yeah. would be an emergency above a certain degree temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know, like, yeah, why the fuck can't, why, if you have the money, and you say you have the money, mm -hmm. just fucking give it. Yeah, just be nice, people, come on. Be nice, and it's his fucking sister. Yeah. And she's only 22. Yeah, that's like a child, man. That's still, yeah, like, I don't know, like, I know I'm 23, turning 24, like, I'm only, I'm only now starting to get into, like, kind of the adult <laughs> process of life, you know, of, like... Yeah, and I'm 25, two people still, you know, are like, oh, that's young as shit. Yeah, you know, like, shit, I don't know, like, we're fucking, I know we're, like, ahead for our ages, but, like... Well, it's just, it's, like, you know, there's a difference between yeah. being 19 and being 22 and being 22 and being 25. It's not all just, like, young, stupid people. It's also just, like... I don't know. None of us are established. No, yeah, of course not. Yeah, like, we're not. No one I know that's 25 is established. Yeah, already, you gotta own a home by 21. That doesn't make any sense. You gotta own a home. Yeah. Sorry. You gotta. Like, you're upset at you this 22-year-old for have not a career. having all the money for her bills? I'm sorry, but have, have you met any other 22-year-olds? 22 22-year-old? Like, none of us do. Yeah, literally. Like, fuck, man. Like, Jesus. I it Only was, recently have we already, like, getting able to a point where, like... If you came from a perfect family that had enough money to send you to college so you didn't have to work for four years, or you did work for four years and you're the, hu you know, a superhuman, yeah, and, and like you graduated and now you're out at fucking 22 and you have somehow landed a good job and you make money, then great, awesome... Uh, a yeah, lot of us a are lot. struggling. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of us are fucking struggling. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't, like, this, like, weird, like, uh, uh, like, pipe dream of, like, the American dream, you know? Like, you go to college, get a degree, get a good job. That doesn't fucking exist anymore. No. Just doesn't. People refuse to believe that, um, shit like that happens to 22 year olds yeah that it's not perfectly easy to get your degree in four years no of course not no it's like not it's very the hard. length of time to get a degree is increasing because of how much yeah stress and pressure it is and like having fucking you know like uh like all this debt having all this like yeah 20 bucks a day fucking not like it yeah sure it adds up but like if you both make the money fuck it why not yeah that's what i think and I, people are really shocked at how often i like give things mm easily i think because i'm like if i have the money i'm gonna do it yeah fuck it yeah you know like i had to pay for uh, one of my coworkers' lunches this week because they were 
They weren't eating. And they... Bad, we, but he's not good. They didn't have money for groceries. And I honestly felt really bad throughout the week. But we just met this week. So it's kind of difficult to be like, I just met you. You're not eating lunch. I'll buy lunch for you. Like, yeah. you know, it's pretty fucking weird. Um, But they had bought this meal that was supposed to be delivered to our office that never came. Oh, it yeah. did come, but like not Late. during lunch. So yeah. they were going to miss lunch again. So I just bought them fucking lunch. And they were like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, which is very nice. But I'm like, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm just going to, it should be like, yeah, of course. Simple. Yeah. Like it should easily. be simple like that. Yeah. And if there um, are any problems, you're a bad person. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Just like, I don't know. This fucking like, you got to hoard all your money. Got to become Bezos. It doesn't make any sense. Fuck that. No. You, I mean. You I'm, guys real like, you know, you guys <laughs> realize that spending money like nine times out of ten actually helps yeah. the economy and the country yes. through taxes, through the share of like, you mm -hmm. know, you shouldn't just hoard all your fucking money. Like, you should save money. I'm not going to say like, don't just, just spend all your fucking money. No, I'm not saying that, of course not. But like, you know, like, like genuinely like the whole reason that the economy is supposed to work theoretically in this capitalist system that we currently have is through like taxing, through the idea of like, I'm going to pay you for a good you, or a service, I get that good or service, so I have this thing I can use, uh -huh. and like you know, then that person can use that money, get other goods and services, because we're all skilled at different fucking things, you yeah. know. Someone gives me a dollar a month for fucking Patreon, I yeah. make the hahas, and then I use that dollar to go to Wawa and get a coffee. You yeah, know? yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like I don't know, like that's like I don't know. You like and like you're sending money to your family, mm -hmm. which is something that so many people fucking do. Yeah, and you're just gonna be an asshole and be like, no. It's a different no heater there. You know, I, uh, the people that really believe in like, you have to have a different thought process to make money. Yeah. Uh, how about it's you like, yeah, the thought yourself. process is I have to hoard all my money and not give it to anyone. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. I have to not even give it to myself. I have to not even pay yeah. for things for myself. If I, if I am, I, if I'm smart, yeah. I can retire at 65 and not do anything fun because I'm an old brittle fuck. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, yeah. And that's why you see all these old men in sports cars driving the speed limit. Oh my God. <laughs> that's happened like so many fucking times. That's what happens is and they like, move uh, down like, whatever, here. Buy your fucking, yeah, you know. They start their little business. They get, they make enough money to buy like a fucking Ferrari or whatever it is that they wanted. And then they finally have it. And then they drive the slowest speed they imaginable can in the left like lane because they they're 80 years old now yeah because now yeah they can't even take the time out of their life yeah. to like or rent out a racetrack for a day or like do yeah, the, to go and do something fun because they've like, lost learn how their, to fucking drift their, and, yeah yeah it's, so i don't know like fuck live your goddamn life if you're just, live it yeah if you're living to see like 80 like first of all how the fuck do you know if you're gonna see 80 second of all well like, okay you yeah, can like, i come in here and say like a fucking it's like um conservative christians where they're like they it's you know regular christians are like okay yes i'm a christian and um i actually believe in the christian values so uh, you know you can be jewish you could be any other religion hindu buddhist whatever yeah. atheist i don't care it's fine go do that i'm gonna go over here and be a christian yeah that's fine saying you know i love jesus christ in my instagram bio and putting it on my car that's fine that's fine whatever those are your things right yeah being a conservative like fundamentalist christian goes out to you know jewish people um fucking uh like muslims muslims like yeah thank you i was thinking about it um islam yeah islam muslims and uh going up to them and being like you need to be a christian because you're going to that shit now you're bothering other people yeah, once it gets to that point of like, and that's like, yeah, with every with every religion, there's that those sects of like, you know, and fucking. I feel like there's a cult mentality with this idea of you need to hoard your money. Yeah, you know, because most people don't do that. Oh yeah, for sure. Most no. people think like that's how they're supposed to be, which no, no, don't do that now. But they s make money to spend on their family. Yeah, and be be comfortable. Like I don't know, I get the idea of like, I, there's a limit, obviously, to where like everyone's gonna have their own personal limit of like, okay, at what point are you just hoarding money? You know? Yeah. Me, it's probably somewhere past maybe. Well, it's definitely past like eight digits. I can understand like if you're trying to like save for if you want to have a retirement, I like, think you're six gonna need, digits. Really, past a hundred thousand saved. Yeah, yeah, I could probably have a hundred thousand saved 
way lower, actually. Way lower, yeah. Okay. Like 50K, maybe. Okay. You know? Like, I could probably go a couple of years on that. Okay, all right. I'm not paying for everything. That'd be like if I had 50K and you had 50K. Oh, uh, okay. You know then. I mean? Yeah, I get you. Uh, yeah, we could probably get through like the year. <laughs> yeah, right. But that's the thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess like, I don't know. It's like how far, I don't know. I think at some point you're just getting diminishing returns on how much you're saving. Like, I don't know. I think like even like 100K each of us would definitely help out for like a few years. Mm -hmm. But then eventually you'd have to go back to work, obviously, you know, but like trying to think of like for like retirement. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right now. Like, mm hmm. I don't know. I, I lost my main point. I thought you meant like, how much money do you make until you just start giving it away? Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Oh, like yearly? Like, just, yeah, that's what I meant. Like yearly. Oh, yeah. After 100,000, like I'm just going to start yeah, giving away. 100,000, yeah. I'm just going to start. If I make that yearly, I'm getting like checks in every month and I'm working. What else am I going to do with that? Yeah, I feel that. I ha you know, I'm, I'm building my savings, but then there's still money left over every month. Yeah, there's still going to be, yeah, at some point, like, More literally, More than yeah. I can spend unless I go out and get steak every night, but I yeah. don't fucking want to do that. steak. And yeah, and eventually at some point, like, that's not even going to be able to be, like, you're still going to be making more money. Yeah, and you know, I mean, like, you know, taste will change and stuff, but I'm also just, like, a very simple person, like... Yeah, I get that. I'm going to eat Chef Boyardee. Yeah, I feel you that. You can't stop me from Blue doing box that. mac and cheese. Yeah. America home test kitchen mac and cheese. <laughs> you know, fucking, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I get that. I get that then. Yeah, I was I was talking, I guess, yeah, my, I was looking at like retirement overall, and everything. Yeah, but those, those are different numbers. Like, yeah, but I think like, yeah, like if we were making 100K, like each of us. No, I mean, like if I had a job where my salary was like 100K yeah, and I, I also have a 401K money. and I know that I have money left over every month. I'd probably start giving it away too. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. Get those tax fucking advantage. <laughs> and that's it. It's stupid that that that's is a thing, that's... but yeah. Honestly, yeah, I don't know. At some point, I want to get to a point, like, genuinely, that, like, I don't, like, if I'm making enough money, I'm not going to, like, just, I'm not going to write off anything on my tax. Really? I don't know. I feel like that's, like, such a fucking, like... Cop out? Yeah, right? Like, I, I don't already know. don't, and I should, but I don't. Like, I only, I did it this year only because I would have owed, like, 2,000 bucks. Well, yeah, I think if I owe, if then, I owe yeah, two thousand dollars, yeah, like I don't know, but if I'm smart, like all right, yeah, I forty percent of my income's going away right now. I don't fucking care. Yeah, literally, and I'm so fucked. My thought process is, if I get a dollar back from the IRS, I'm not writing anything. Off. Yeah, I don't need any. I don't need to lie. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I feel that. If you know, if I if I like like literally put too much money into the taxes, like and it's like. 300 bucks i'm like i'm good i just and you know what it is though yeah it's not that i trust the government or i want them to have that tax money yeah or that i even want other people to have it for their social whatever yeah it's not even that it's just i don't want to fill out the form i get it yeah it's just too fucking i don't feel like filling out the form all right government i made a million dollars this year tax it tax it yeah I, I that's who yeah. cares what i spent it on fuck you yeah <laughs> And you'd probably get like a fucking article somewhere saying that you're the most taxed rich person ever. <laughs> <laughs> you'd probably make so accountant, much money by doing that. calling me up like, hey, uh, you, you did can't you, you fucking can, you, lose. Like, you are making so much more money now. That was the perfect marketing scheme. Yeah. You basically paid 60, like 40% of your yearly income on marketing. Yeah. <laughs> by sending it to tax. By you know being what I mean? like, yeah, I'm fucking taxed more than all you fucks. <laughs> I like, paid more money yeah. in taxes than Elon. Yes, anyone. Yeah, literally, literally anyone. Literally anyone, yeah. <laughs> God. Oh, man. Solved it. I don't Solved know how it. we got I don't there. Even know. Yeah. I don't even remember what happened. If uh, you have money, you should give it. Fuck yeah, off. Yeah, you should give it away. Yeah. <laughs> you should give it away. What are you, fucking social? What are you, a communist? No, nah, more like a socialist. socialist. Yeah. Wise kids, you know, go watch it. People like that, we want to reference that, so fucking, yeah. yeah. What I'm you just, do uh, for two dollars and fifty cents? I need a whole fish. All right, you guys mm -hmm. ready for this one? Do 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 do. Y'all right. ready for this? Am I the asshole for sale? Ha. Uh -huh. Me too. Am I the asshole for selling a family heirloom to pay for my destination wedding? You want to say that heirloom? People are gonna get on you. Heirloom. 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 Am I the asshole for selling a family heirloom to pay for my destination wedding? Gotcha. Is that how it's said? Yes. Okay, cool. My fiance, 38 female, and I, 39 male, are planning to get married this summer. We both want to have quite a lavish wedding at a winery in another state. 
The two of us agree that it's the most important occasion in our lives, so we should make it as memorable as possible. We both have stable jobs and a good amount of savings, but it's not quite enough for the admittedly ambitious plans we have in our in our heads. My, pa my father passed away in January, and in his will, he left me a very valuable, think five figures, family heirloom. I'm not much for big family tradition, so although it's a nice thing to have, I'm not massively attached to it. Mm. I have plenty of other good memories of my father, and I don't need a fancy heirloom to remember him by. My brother, 34 male, however, is a huge history nerd and is really, really attached to it. He was very upset by my father's decision in the will. The reason it went to me and not to him is, be is that this has been traditionally passed to firstborn sons. My fiance and I don't plan to have children, and I think he assumed, therefore, that he or his children would be in line to get it if I were to pass away. After some discussion, my wife-to-be and I decided that we would like to sell this heirloom to pay for our wedding. My brother, who is also my best man, was furious when he found out and said he wanted nothing to do with the wedding anymore. He thinks my wife-to-be and I are behaving like spoiled brats. In addition, he's convinced my uncle and cousins not to come to the wedding either. Wow. With our parents having passed away, this means that virtually none of my family will attend the wedding, which I'm really upset about. I think since I legally inherited this heirloom, I can do what I want with it. I think he's just upset because I ruined his expectations of one day inheriting it. But since my uncle and cousins agreed with him enough that they're not going to the wedding, I'm not sure if I'm the right in the right. Am I the asshole? And it accidentally called my fiance, fiance my wife in a couple places. Okay. Um, Why would they skip out on the wedding? <laughs> fuck around and find out, my guy. <laughs> like, that's what it is. I was going to actually say before they said it in the post, legally, you can do this. Yeah. <laughs> Are people going to think of you as an asshole? Yes. Yeah. Especially the people in your family. No one else. I don't give a shit if you sell an heirloom. Yeah, it doesn't affect me. Pay for a wedding? <laughs> but I don't also, know. Yeah, if it upsets your fucking brother and also your cousin and uncle, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you do that because you know that, like, it's really attached, you know, they care it's, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not going to go to your wedding. All I don't because know. because you want, like, this really lavish fucking, I really hate, like, listen, like, I know, like. We've been to weddings before. We've been wedding, to weddings before. Honestly, yeah. It, and we just have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like, you know, like, I, listen, weddings, <sighs> love them or hate them. I, I'm not, like, the ones I've been to, I've been hit and miss. <laughs> and you know what's the struggle is, like, if we want to get married, I've been yeah. thinking, like, how do we have a wedding? Because we, we hate have all a of wedding. It. Yeah. Do we, we hate it. Do we just, like, get the paper and just tell everyone to send us money? <laughs> Yeah, like, is it, like, because we, like, we, we want the gifts, we want the party, but we don't want the wedding we part. We want the bullshit, <laughs> yeah. Because this, because this bullshit happens. Yeah. I'm going to be like, Sarah, listen, I really want to have, like, I want to go to the, I want to go to, like, Westgate. <laughs> like, I don't know why Westgate. <laughs> Westgate. But I can't afford it, so I'm selling the cameras. Do you yeah, fucking... it's like, no, what? No, yeah. you shouldn't sacrifice your life to have, a, like, we would do it in the cheapest way possible. Yeah, of course. And it would be nice. I but think. like, man, people really just have to like this. It's just a fucking pissing contest at some yeah, point. No, absolutely. like, I don't know. Like, you know, you, you fucking, you, you, <laughs> your friend's getting married. So you have to get married. So your friend's getting married. Then, so you got to get married. You know, he They're comes gonna, in on a boat. He you comes in on a boat. Something. Then know. you gotta, you gotta do sparklers. That wasn't even, they don't even know each other, but like, they, they don't even know they, each they, other, but yeah. yeah, but so I'm going to do sparklers. I'm going to leave on a boat. Yeah. And then like something about boats. Everyone just Everybody loves water. Boats, I don't know. Man. Like, yeah, like fucking, yeah. Oh, you, you did a wedding. Uh, uh, we're going to get married on Tower of Terror without Disney knowing. Or we're going to we're gonna tell Disney we want to get married. We're going to rent out the whole park. Yeah, we're going to get to the, the Cinderella Castle thing. And it's all like, listen, guys, like spend money. But and I'm being really contradictive today. But yeah. like there's a limiting point of like money equals happiness or well, like, like worthwhileness. I mean, spend your own money, I guess, whatever. But, but I, once you're getting to a point of like telling your family to piss off, I'm going to sell this heirloom that's been in our family for ever, you know? Well, and it's also one of those things where it's like, I mean, I thought the point of an heirloom is that you receive it and you have the honor of yeah. having it, right? Nah. My dad's fucking dead. I can do whatever I want with it. And like, I have fa a family heirloom that like, I mean, my family bloodline's gonna fucking end soon. So, <laughs> like, uh, every every one of the newest generation are all females, mm. and I think most of them are not having kids. Yeah, because of s s various y Z, yeah health issues that they have. So I'm the only one. I don't want kids either. So it's gonna not 
it's not gonna happen. But even if I did have a kid, it wouldn't be last name O'Hearan. Yeah. You know, it would be Chinlin. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Going traditional male. Although to be fair, like I definitely wouldn't like I'd be O'Hearan Chinlin, probably. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I'll just be Chinlin. Or Chinlin O'Hearan kinda goes off uh, Yeah. Better. Yeah, true. Yeah. So whatever. Fucking Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like literally I don't know. It, yeah, I feel like it is kind of like a like I don't know, like whatever, like respect the dad, whatever, who cares? Like, but like I don't know. I feel like your dad, like still like choosing you, even knowing that mm-hmm. like the little brother, like I don't know, like think yeah, like I'm even thinking like think about how the little brother feels, and also like the dad's brother. It's one of those things again where it's like it would be nice <laughs> if you did that, so you should do it because it's nice, you know? Yeah, like it, it's you don't have to. For sure, you don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Absolutely, you don't have to, but you should because it's nice. Yeah, right? just be a nice person. Be nice. Just be fucking nice. Yeah, it's a sacrifice for you. God. I don't boy, know, Boy, wouldn't it be nice? It's literally just like a do this, boost your relationship with this person, do that. Everyone hates Everyone, that. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> That's, it's... <laughs> You might as well be in a fucking Telltale game, dude. Yeah, literally. Like, like that's literally what it is. Like, you decide to, uh, you go to war with, like, uh, it's, what is it? Fucking, uh, like, in Civ Six, you decide to just be a warmonger and, like... Yeah, it's like, you, you these are the one consequences of and, your like, action. Oh, hey, cool, this country likes you. Every other country, like, lowly disrespects you. you. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, and that's why when you overtake, you see a, uh, a city... I don't know. <laughs> when you're at war with somebody else and Civ, and yeah. they've overtaken um a city. You've already created that warmonger, take all of their cities. Yeah, just fucking got and then release the capital. Push the gate of the previous one. And you release that warmonger status. Hell yeah. This is that's a pro civ five pro-civ tip. Five tip <laughs> with Sarah here in. I don't know what that, how that translates to in real life. <laughs> but uh <laughs> so if you want to sell the, sell the heirloom you gotta save all the other heirlooms heirlooms fuck heirlooms and then <laughs> uh yeah you're kind of a dick then, if you yeah. do that like yeah. i don't know I, but you're only wedding, a dick because you're telling your brother they can't have feelings yeah that's why because he's he's that's fucking you're gay saying. actually fucking all right i'm gonna stop this right here yeah before we go further yeah all right but yeah solved it that was nice dude hell yeah epic Okay, this one is um a little crazy. <laughs> this one is a little, little crazy. It's a little crazy. crazy. It's a little wacky. A little what? Crazy town banana pants. Trigger warning. Emotional abuse. And maybe narcissistic abuse. There's going to be no TikToks this week. I didn't pick any good stories. This one could be a good TikTok. All, the good, all the good stories have trigger warnings on them. I'm fucking. I'm. That's why I, I'm doing the warnings. Though, I, so you can you. Use them. I can. I can. Yeah, I can cut them in. Yeah, sweet. Am I the asshole for isolating my romantic partner from their so-called friends? <laughs> oh no! The joke we've been doing for months now has come true. <laughs> That's why I chose this one. Yeah. Oh no! We brought this into existence. My romantic partner, Chris has a lot of friends who they don't realize are detrimental to them. <laughs> I see it in real time, the backhanded compliments, and I've suspected they gossip about Chris behind their back. But what is important is this most recent situation. Chris and I have a small get-together at our house. It's us and four of Chris's friends. I already don't really like these people, but Chris has been talking about having them over, and I didn't want to disappoint them, as I, didn't, as I don't have that much time to spend off. All- Oh, fuck me. As I don't have that much time off to spend anyways. Chris and I are serving food and drinks, and suddenly one friend makes a joke in poor taste about Chris's alcoholic parents. Pisses me off instantly, but Chris says nothing. They clearly want want to let it go, but then that same friend continues and gets the others to fucking join in. Whoa. Chris tries to awkwardly laugh it off and get them to talk about literally anything else. To seal the deal, one of Chris's friends, Maria, makes a joke about our relationship. These people don't like me either. Think I'm edgy, angry, see through their BS too easily. Yeah, I'm (laughs) sure. 
<laughs> we live in a society. Dude, I'm sure they're tossing and turning in their beds thinking about you <laughs> and how you see through their BS too easily. He sees only, it. See through my bullshit. If only my bullshit was more opaque. <laughs> like what? No. <laughs> Up until then, it's just been small comments and dirty looks towards me. I finally lose it. I am screaming at these people to get Whoa. the fuck out of my house about an hour after they got there because how dare you walk in here, embarrass Chris, and insult me to my face. They call me a psycho. And I lean into it, grabbing a small knife. It's a butter knife. Not sharp at all. Uh, still, though. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, they leave. Maria shouts that Chris is always welcome to crash on her couch on the way out. I spend half an hour telling Chris how I don't want them talking to these people ever again. I spill how they never liked Chris and were terrible people to have close. Chris argues a bit, but they are clearly too emotionally drained to have much say. I take advantage of this and get them to agree with me. I am not letting these fake friends even talk to Chris anymore. My partner does pretty much what I say. So I'm <laughs> confident. <laughs> My partner does pretty much what I say. So I'm confident that they don't talk to them when I'm at work. I straight up said to Chris, I am isolating you. You don't need anyone else. Whoa. If there was a shelter down the road where one could find good friends, I'd be all for it. But I'm sick of assholes attacking my romantic partner because because they hate me or are jealous of them for honestly being better than them. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on patting yourself on the bat, my guy. You got it. It's hell yeah. I feel as though I did what I had to do. I regret nothing. Okay, so now we have some other comments. I regret nothing from a different thread doing from so much so much work right now so doing so much like fucking so okay we have a different comment from OP okay from a different thread I desire to protect one person in my life so I'd say I love them genuinely even if I don't really view them as on my level I relish <laughs> in dominating them psychologically and get a huge rush when I feel like I am the only person they will ever turn to for comfort I can't even begin to describe how addicting that power trip is when they cater to my every need and put themselves second. I often reward them for such behavior by buying them things, giving them time, etc. I have manipulated them, and if I'm being honest, emotionally abused them in the early stages of our relationship, but I feel like I do love them and would be mad as hell if they ever left. It's once again hard to put into words, but I just have no idea what I'd do if they dared to abandon me instead of leaving them. said that you just said that out loud on on the internet just for everyone to hear just everyone i really has, everyone you know everyone, it really is like everyone has access to a keyboard and you know, mouse and reddit and they just and they just, just they just put they just whatever. Put whatever they want you know no no thinking about the consequences no thinking about how you're gonna look behind the thin veil of anon anonymity whatever the fuck really just like straight like you know like you guys are being a little too open about this i feel like have like shame you know well okay so that's impossible because this person is a diagnosed narcissist oh yeah diagnosed diagnosed self-proclaimed diagnosed narcissist and also their flair on the narcissist subreddit is apparently empress of narcs <laughs> Which is like kind of funny to be like, you're so narcissistic that you're like, I'm the Even best the fucking one. Narcissist. I'm the best narc. All the other narcs fucking, yeah, listen, I'm number one. All right. I'm the real number one. So once again, I ask the question. Like, that's just something that they have in their brain, right? Yeah. So what do we, what, what do we, do we judge them by their actions? I, I yeah. Like, yeah, it's like the only way you can judge people, right? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like narcissistic people. I don't want to paint with like a wide brush. I do, I really don't. I try no, not I, to. I don't want to. I I don't. But I'll fuck. let me let me stop you there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't want to do that. No, yeah, no. I'm saying that like this one specific person. Yeah, is I, very clearly like being. That's and that's what I've learned in therapy too because uh, I've talked about my mom a couple times to a couple therapists and they've been like she sounds like she has BPD or they'll give her you know you, you can't diagnose someone that's not in front of you but. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, it sounds like this is an explanation for her behavior. And yeah. I go, that makes me feel terrible because I've just been acting like responding to someone who's, you know, has a diagnosis, has a 
disorder. Yeah. As if they genuinely mean what they say. Right. And my last therapist was like, you shouldn't feel bad about being angry that you were abused just because the person that abused you might have a, you know, a personality like, disorder. Yeah. Cause they could have gotten therapy. Yeah. There was, yeah, there were, they could they have made about they, therapy and they could have gotten it, but instead they decided to abuse you. Yeah, exactly. They made that decision. And that's the thing that I want to point out. Is that this person has very clearly made the decision. They've been to some sort of level of psychiatric. They've been to a psychiatrist or a psychologist and they've been diagnosed. As a narcissist. And they know what they're doing and they continue to do what they're doing. Yeah. And then they say they like doing it. Yeah. They liked emotionally abusing this person. And um, I will say there is an edit. So they did say that, like, thank you guys for like, this is exactly what I needed to hear, which is multiple people saying, like, you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, don't do this. This is a lot. But it also sounds like the friends were dicks. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. It seems like there was an issue with the friends. Right. However, instead of being like, hey, I'm, I'm going to scream and put a butter knife to my head. To it's my like, fucking, yeah, like. That's a little, you kind of went a little too far, I I'm going to scream and brandish a knife, even though it's a butter knife, you know? Yeah, it's still, it's like, still yeah. a knife. It's like, like yeah, you still you know? decided to lean into this, like, crazy the person fucking, thing. Yeah, like, you decided, like, I'm going to push the push the gas a little bit. But okay, like, we're going to hit the floor. Yeah, like, you, you know, just like if you have some sort of um, diagnosis, and people are going to say, like, narcissists can't be diagnosed or something, because there's, like, this whole thing. It's just, like, something you live with, and I'm like, okay... We've lost the plot on the word diagnosis. Yeah. <laughs> a baby with narcissism doesn't just say, I'm a narcissist. They don't know. They don't know yet. Yeah. Until they learn. That they're they narcissists. They think they're yeah. normal and they think, you know, the things that they think are normal until they learn. Yeah. But which is through a diagnosis. And that's what I'm using the word for. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think it's an illness or like something that you can get better from. Yeah. I get what you mean. No. I, but I do think it's something you can be cognizant of and understand. Yeah, for sure. Like, you might not be able to feel empathy, but you might be able to learn it. Yeah, I, I think you can learn empathy, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think, yeah, there's still rehabilitation for most people, you know, like shit. That's what I believe in, and I yeah. want to say that I think that. But Fuck this, this person, <laughs> in this scenario, needs was, to learn was, how to yeah, better need, support their partner. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Solved it, dude. Fuck yeah. Yes. Oh my god, open Spotify.com.net. Spotify.com.net. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, there's a fucking theme now because oh, no. yeah, I didn't realize. Woo. That's what happens when we, we do stories differently. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, so final story of the night. Mm -hmm. Am I the asshole for telling my stepmom she is no better than the girls who tormented her in high school? Mm. I, 24 female, believe my stepmom, married to my dad, is a narcissist. Okay. Growing up, she used to always find creative ways to backhandedly put me down and compare me to my bio cousin and her nephews. This cousin of mine is like the golden child in her eyes. She can do absolutely no wrong whatsoever. I was always told I had to be more like her and less like myself. As a result, I was always increasingly self-conscious and embarrassed of failure. This past Thanksgiving, I went home to visit all of them and cousin decided to come up since she is in nursing school close by. The whole time my family is fawning over her in front of me like she's the next coming of Christ. Yet nothing, nobody bothers to acknowledge me. I currently am in graduate school for math, yet cousin being a nurse takes the cake, I guess. Shrug emoji. Mm. The night before Thanksgiving, we were all hanging out in the kitchen while stepmom begins kissing my cousin's donkey once again, this time claiming she'll make so much money. She then turns to me and says, too bad you'll never make as much as her in your lifetime. Oh my god. I explained that most professors make well into the six-figure range in my department, which is true because I've seen the numbers myself. And she just keeps gaslighting me, telling me I'm wrong. I told her it's absolutely ridiculous that she's comparing us by money and not by the fact that we want to help people through important professions. I then got fed up after everyone just blankly stared at me and no one called stepmom out for being a bully. Yeah. So I went upstairs to continue working on my schoolwork. Later, stepmom comes up and smugly asks if she can help me. I told her nope and continued back to my work. She then stands there and starts instigating a fight, claiming that I treat my dad like shit and that I'm being disrespectful. I told her she embarrassed me in front of my family and ruined yet another visit for me. Hmm. I then called her a bully to her face and told her she is no better than those girls who tormented her throughout high school if she even thinks her behavior toward me is acceptable. 
She seemed stunned at my statement and ran downstairs crying like a baby. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now here's why I think I may be the asshole. My stepmom was horribly bullied by the other girls at her school growing up. They used to stuff dead animals in her parents' mailbox and call her vulgar names, like oh. Slut, for example. Holy shit. I don't think it's fair she's taking she's taking that this pain out on me since I absolutely had nothing to do with it, but am I the asshole for making this comparison? Did she say that she's talked to her before about this? Uh, let me see. I'll reread it. Let me see. Because if this is the first time and that's what you go to, it's like kind of, that's kind of wild. But yeah, she was bullying you. Yeah. And like, so let's see. If it's multiple times and this is the only way you can get through to her. That might be. Yeah. Growing up, she used to always find creative ways to backhandedly put me down and compare me to my bio cousin and her nephews. Mm -hmm. uh, night before Thanksgiving or I'll be. And she did say that this is another one ruined. So I wonder, I guess it just happens all the time. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm so, leaning towards not the asshole, I think. I'm yeah. leaning towards not the it asshole, It was a too. lifetime of bullying, and you finally stand up to your bully. Like, I mean... At some point, yeah. It's like, natural to respond in a... In a relatively, like... Over-the-top way. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't even really think it's over-the-top, honestly. I think, yeah, it could be... I think it's just real. I think you just were being real, and she you was just, shocked. Yeah, so I don't she know. She didn't just lie down and take. Listen, if she is a narcissist, whatever. So, like, you can be a narcissist and you can be dumb. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. There are a lot of narcissists out there that are stupid as fuck and think they're smart as shit. Yeah. And they're just out there because they, you know, have this thing and uh, they think they're great and they walk over and they try to. It's like a baby trying to manipulate you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, obviously you can see it and you call it out and they're like, why would you call it out? Because you're a peon and I'm better than you. And you're like, and it's just not like a fun interaction. <laughs> it's just like fun. God, I feel that. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. Yeah. I guess like, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards not the asshole. No, I don't think so. Either. Like, I don't know. I think, yeah, there's a, some point like. Even if you, like, are kind of an asshole in the moment, like, overall, like, the assholishness levels are, like, here to, like, fucking all the way off screen. Like, yeah, like... It, it, uh, I'm gonna tell also, a story about... It was, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. I, I actually I lost my train of thought, but you got oh, a story? Okay. Yeah, I got, I'm gonna tell a story about this uh, work friend that I had. Um, I showed up at this place, and it was data entry, so I was typing. It was typing. Yeah. That was what we were doing. And I met this person and they they asked me to like sit with them at lunch. They were a lady and um, they're also, I mean, I don't know. They were white, which is important for the story. And um, they claimed that they were being bullied by the black women in the office. Okay. Um, to the point where they had to like take it to HR and they were moved from their desk to another thing. I now, I later sat by these black women and had the best fucking time of my life. Hell yeah. Okay. And it was basically just, she was complaining about like them using lotion or like them just like doing shit by themselves or like being loud sometimes and something like that and like talking to each other. But they were all very good friends. If you actually talk to them instead of just like judged them based on their race. Yeah, then... Yeah, she was making complaints and they were like, fuck that white, little white girl. <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, that made sense. So she was the victim in that scenario, right? Yeah. We were good friends. She texts me and she says, hey, I just got my period. Do you have a pad? And I was like, oh, I only have tampons. I'm sorry. Do you want a tampon? And she goes, um, yeah, I guess. So I give her a tampon. Oh, yeah. I remember this now. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah, no problem. So then I go home. It's 2 a.m. I get a text from her and she says, I don't know how you can use tampons. It must be because you're so loose. And for context, we just had like girl talk of like talking about like her boyfriends. She's in a long distance relationship with her boyfriend. She doesn't have sex at all. I was like, Fuck it, I'd love having sex with my boyfriend, dude. I've had sex with many men in my life. And uh, she then threw this in my face. Loose. And called me loose. And I immediately was like, fuck you. <laughs> and she exploded. She had 
so many like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. I just don't know what tam- how tampons work. I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know that was a um, derogatory statement. And I was like, Loose. what do you mean? And she goes, oh, first thing she says was, it's a joke. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll fuck okay. off. Yeah. How about well, you? It's suck not my, fucking funny. Yeah. Fuck you. And then she goes, You're no, actually, comedian. I didn't know how tampons work. And I go, well, which one is it? Is it a joke or is it that you don't know how or tampons is it genuine? work? Genuine. Yeah. Either way, you're you're just keep digging a hole at that point. So yeah. I was like, okay, we're not friends anymore. Fuck you. Fair. I was like, fuck off. No. Yeah. And uh, I fucking moved to some other spot just from general, just like moving. And um, then learned all the shit about her tiff with the black women in the office. And learned that they were actually dope as shit. And, you know. Yeah. She just kind of sucked as a person. And uh, she texts me and she goes, let's meet on our 15 down in the break room to talk about things. And this is after like a month of like not talking to her, not giving a shit, not like speaking to her at all. And I was like, okay. And so I go down and she's like, she goes, so, you know, what what do you think? Like, what do you have to say about like our friendship? I was like, nothing. nothing. Yeah, you didn't talk to me for a month after you. I called didn't her. talk to her. I, I was like, you. I'm yeah. done. I don't. What do you mean? And she goes, you can't just be done like that. You can't just like throw. And I was like, yeah, yes, I, I can. can. Yeah. I just looked at her and I was like, yeah, I can. Yeah, you called me fucking loose. You called me loose. No one in my life is other As, than my mother probably has called <laughs> me loose. That's pretty wild of a statement. And that's pretty crazy. You gotta be like, a you offended fucking... me, and I don't really want to be friends with you anymore. Yeah, I'm allowed to do that. And she starts bawling crying about how I won't be friends with her. And I was like, I don't mean, I don't know. And I just said to her like, I these are the consequences of your actions. I don't get consequences though, you say, Sarah. <laughs> and she was okay. crying with tears. And I probably looked like the bad guy cuz I just sat there and I was like, I don't care. Yeah, this isn't yeah. <laughs> you called care. me loose. I don't care that you're crying. I don't because I'm sorry, it's, this is an open and this. shut situation. Yeah. And also this entire time she did not apologize. Yeah. So yeah, if you, you know, like, yeah, you could have, you could have, you know. Sometimes the they fucking cry. You know what I mean? Like sometimes people that are so entitled, we'll I don't do think she was like, a narcissist, but like it, narcissism implies that they're entitled to some sort of like, think they have more stature over yeah. you or something. Like sometimes they're so entitled that you step up to them and they start crying and they go somewhere else. Yeah, right. And they flee away crying and it will make you feel bad for a second. Don't feel bad. No, yeah, of course not. Keep yeah. the facts Fuck of that. the situation in your mind. Yeah. They fucked with you. You step to them. And then they... And then they were upset about the consequences of their actions. Yeah, so fuck them. Like, yeah. Jesus. God, yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah, at that point, like, fucking, I don't know. And, like, other people will make you feel bad, too. Like, but people were like, like, why was she crying? I saw you talking to her. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's also a visual thing, like, she did that so that people would come to me and be like, you're exactly. a bad person. Exactly, yeah. That's the thing, too, is trying to leverage the yeah. opinion of, like, court, like, public opinion, you know? Yes. And, like, I don't know. It's, like, at that point, like... Some people will see past it because, like, they're smart. Yeah, it, like some shit should be handled privately. You know, mm-hmm. like I don't know, man. You just I, if I tweet out at someone, like I fucking hate your guts, fucking you fucking suck. Yeah, you're just and then asking. They're for like, like, I've never talked to you before, and they're like, why are you drama. judging me? <laughs> why are you judging me? <laughs> why? That's so mean of you to say. That's so fucking mean. Yeah, like you hurt just like a random person, and then they were like, <laughs> "Fuck you." Why? Yeah. And I guess the thing to note is, like, it's childish behavior. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fucking childish. It's Once again, on the playground, kid punches you, you fall to the floor, or you punch him back, yeah, and, and then, then he goes, ah, and runs away, screaming, crying. And then you're somehow you're the one that gets in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Fucking hate. Hate it. <laughs> I hate is just a human thing to do. Yeah. God, man. And maturing is not doing that. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you're not the asshole. No, you're not the asshole. I don't think so. That's our fucking show, dude. That's our fucking show, dog. Nice morning to afternoon podcast, baby. Yeah, baby. Sarah, what do you want to plug? You can follow me on Twitter at uh, That's O'Hearin, T-H-A-T-S-O-H-E-E-R-O-N. That's also my name on Tumblr, um, Instagram, TikTok, and that's it. I am Joshua Chinland on Twitter, a guy nicknamed JC on Twitch and TikTok. 
Uh, follow the podcast on APWSDR on TikTok. The podcast saves on Instagram, Twitter, APWSDR, mm-hmm. APWSDR Productions on YouTube. Uh-huh. Uh, fucking a podcast status relationship on all podcasting platforms. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell on YouTube, and mm-hmm. raise five stars on Apple and Spotify. Hell yeah, dog. And that's our show. That's our show. Thank you all for being here. Enjoy the rest of your time. Touching the tips. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Why are you giving me that look? (laughs) (laughs) We're going for very different things here. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Outro. 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 Um. Outro. We need actually do an outro. That was perfect. Are you kidding me? Come on. We gotta do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not. That'll just stay there. That was awesome. I'm like really proud of my performance in that. (laughs) 